It is the debater of the West. The Lord of the Jade Swar gladly receives you. They're going to call you. Too they're going to call you racist for this. Aren't you? Wait, hold on. Are you? Are you Chinese by uh, uh, by ethnicity, or do you just live there? Of course, I am Chinese. Okay, hold on. No, you have you have I'm to stop. And ironically, like they're going to call me racist for this. They, you have to stop. Wait, is this a soundboard, or is this actually? Are you doing your best, like Fu Manchu thing? Oh, watch! You do not recognize this voice. I'm doing a Zhao Ming impression from Total Warhammer Three, the Iron Dragon. I haven't. I just played dwarves. I saw you. You literally had a million campaign on stream. Oh, by the way, Chad, I am Chinese. Uh, okay, you can get away. I don't with know. It. I'll, I'll still. Uh, they'll they'll myself, still say uh, I'm. Say some Chinese. There's. I'm. They're still gonna get me for this. Oh. Great. Wait, hold on. Do you, wait, 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 wait. Do you start? You know. Do you start the Grand uh -huh. Cathay campaign with the woman or the man? I forget. The man. Well, they are human. They're they're they're, they're celestial dragons. Yes, the celestial dragons. Okay, this is this is going to be a ninety-minute conversation. But if you keep that going, it's going to be for feel like five hours. You have to stop. You have to stop. Don't worry about it. It's just a funny bit. Um, I was actually thinking about whether or not I should call you a Kislevite. But no, don't worry about it. I'm not going to do that. I did I'm, finish the kids. I'm going to try to. But now I just play dwarves. Yes, it is. I love dwarves. Yeah, <laughs> I understand. Well, Kasei have very similar play style as dwarves. So yeah, anyway, hunkering down. That's, right. Exactly. Can you can you believe? Except we have crows now. How mm -hmm. long it's been? I haven't played in a while. How long it's been? Um, since the first email. Yes, it has been. Actually, the first time I contact you was because it was before your debate with Killer Muppin. That was four years ago. It's not four years that was... ago. That was like two and a half years ago, probably. God. Two and a half years ago. Feels forever ago. Yeah. But yeah, the first time I mentioned about wanting to have a combo with you was two years ago-ish. Jesus but, yeah, Christ. It, it, yeah. Um, it did the... took you a long time, my friend. Well, I was hoping that the Chinese state would collapse entirely and that I could, and then I would be like a whole new dynamic but sadly this hasn't too. happened but when you first reached out yeah. the hong kong protests were still going on too yes indeed that was unfortunately now they it, lost it's very sad to see how that end yes yes it is yeah like, um, i have friends in hong kong in their words the city has perished it has died um yeah, I wanted to talk with you about that. Okay, first of all, this is probably the yes. thing you should open before the um the the ethnic accent impressions. Is could you tell everyone uh, who you are and what your qualifications are for having this conversation? Of course. Uh, hello, chat. Has been a um, you can refer me as Dino Man. I have been a long time boss wash viewer. Uh, I was born and raised in China in a fluent family and moved to the U U.S. for education some years ago. My first language is Chinese, Mandarin, and I use Chinese social media and internet regularly. I study zoology in America uh, and also conservation biology. Oh, So even oh. when I'm not present in China, uh, my living experiences grants me a unique perspective uh, because it's vastly easier for me to access the Chinese internet and have a greater understanding of how the Chinese government functions Due to my life experience and also my family ties with the local government. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Jesus, that's a lot. Okay. So, I think I think it's quite fitting that this conversation happened now, actually, because there was that recent bit of China and Taiwan's relationship coming up in the conversation between yes. Yasan Piker and Ethan Klein. Um, you. Uh so, Wash, would you mind yeah. if I mention Hassan or a specific content creator in this conversation? Yeah, you can go for it. Don't say anything that's going to get me in trouble. <laughs> that's all I ask. Oh, don't worry about it. I will try my best. Is all, all I'm just going to say my personal opinion and my experience with some of the community and some of the content creators oh. themselves. Oh, yeah, then of course, then please. Yeah. Also, when I say things you find inappropriate or off topic, feel free to shut me down. Okay? No, I don't. Now, and now that we've established that you're Chinese, which is sort of the information that chat didn't have at the time, now you can do any accent you want and nobody can call uh, you racist for it, which is a power I don't have. I mean, a, 
I mean, yeah. In fact, I actually uh, wanted to commission a full body costume of the <laughs> Iron Dragon. However, my mother thinks three thousand dollar worth of costume would be a waste of money. Despite you know East Asian family saying like, Co ah, I'll buy you an eighty thousand dollar car, but three thousand dollar costume, uh, no, no deal. But yeah, yeah, calling in um with with the uh, Grand Cathay uh, Grand Dragon V tube yeah. uh, uh, model that stretches oh, like five miles behind you. Yeah. Yeah, that would be hilarious, but you know. So before we begin, to ensure a baseline of knowledge, I want to run through a quick uh, five-minute or less history of China for the audience. Please, go right good? ahead. Of course. Uh, so before the modern era, there is the Imperial China. It has been going for thousands of years, four thousand years of history, written five thousand years of history if you include the myths. Uh, China was never industrialized by itself because the wage labor, the vast population of China, make wage labor much cheaper than even the animals. So there's no note of motivation uh, for the government to industrialize. Yeah. And one of the most important factors of uh, driving force of Chinese uh, ruling system, governing system, is two components. One of them is the Confucian belief of the societal harmony. And the second one is the administrative bureaucracy system. This class of administrative bureaucracy, which mostly made up by Confucius scholar. This system too is such deeply entrenched in our culture that even when Westerners trying to take a shallower version of interpretation of our culture, representing in popular media, like for example, the Grand Kasse of Warhammer <laughs> or in d and in Forgotten Realm or in even in Pandaren of uh, to a Warcraft, right? You know, Pandaria, you can still see elements of these. Yeah, it's it it's, is it's one very of the, deeply entrenched. Mm -hmm. Oh no, it's just yeah, it's it's one of the few things that I guess. So uh, apart from the obvious like religious and cultural stuff, you know, um, like statecraft bureaucracy. I think I remember in Civilization Four, the I think the tech was um, civil state or administrative state or something like that. But that tech was mm -hmm. the, the quote that the narrator gave was um, was one that related to China as well. There's so much stuff like that, uh, I, I guess, um, gets really quickly associated with China. I, I mean, I think it's funny, like you say stuff like um, Grand Cathay or the Pandaren or whatever. But for a lot of Westerners, that literally is like what we get of China, you know? Yes, that is. Unfortunately, which we will talk about this later in our down in the line. Uh, this will also be a very much recurring elements, uh, our overarching arc, if you may, of our conversation today. And uh, <clears throat> and quick go to the modern era. Uh, China have first time making broad, large scale contact with the West in the Qing Dynasty, and it was not pleasant. You know, the Opium War, Britain wanted us to I've buy drugs from them, rumors, we denied, yeah. and they invade. Yeah, and a lot of civilians were slaughtered, they burned down the Imperial Palace. Uh, yeah, I well, think China was then invaded by different country, um, and also Japan. Japan successfully industrialized, and they took over part of China. I don't and think... Because, but China was... I just want to say, I don't think I've talked about this extensively with chat, but for those of you who don't know, like, Ba basically, like Britain got all of China hooked on opium and like raped the entire country. Like it's yep. it's difficult to even yep. describe the. I I think that there are people. I think Kraut said this that you can attribute a lot of China's modern like global political decisions to basically we want revenge slash we want that to never be able to happen again. And they're kind of right <laughs> to do that. It's really bad. Sorry. Well, we call it the 100 years of humiliation. It is a symbol of shame to many nationalists that they see China has been stripped away from its position in the world. The center kingdom, you know, Zhongguo means the central kingdom, that uh, we should be the center of the world ec economically and politically. However, that was completely ruined. At, at least to the nationalists perceived uh, by the colonial Western forces. Yeah, I think someone, in, someone after, in chat pointed yeah. it out, but like, yeah, humiliation <clears throat> is like the core conceit of a lot of national stories. You know, it's 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 like an 
not an origin myth in China's case, but it's it's like a a bedrock upon which you build a lot of decision making. And the Chinese are very very well justified in feeling that way. I think. Yeah. Uh, by um, correcting Chad one thing, Middle Kingdom, yes, that is a translation, but you can also translate it as the Central Kingdom is similar. Is a character means different thing. Um, but yeah. And then, you know, World War II, China was large-scale invaded by Japan for a decade or so. And then China split apart again, just like every single end of the dynasty. Uh, after Japanese was vanquished, mostly thanks to the aid of America and uh, Soviet Union. However, you know, Chinese people did their best to fight off Japan, but we literally cannot produce tank. We don't have the tech. We don't have the resources. So it was a very bloody battle. A um, decent amount of my family member even died in that war. My grandmother was even enslaved, just like many Chinese children at then. She was only eight. Jesus. And she spent most of her teenage life working in a horrible factory. No, they, they whip her every day if she doesn't work to her skin and bones, and they feed her rotted um, grains with worms in it. And, but that's better than starving because they took away all their food. It's even illegal for Chinese occupants to eat rice because all the rice are offering to the greater laws of Japan. Which, it was, um, which, it was um, very sad. Which province was this in, if you don't mind me asking? Like, oh, like around where? Because I know the Japanese made it in pretty far, like with Manchuria and stuff. It's northern China. I, I would love to talk more about my personal history, but maybe not in a broader, broader, broader platform. Okay, of course, of course, gotcha. Down the circle on me and my brother or my family, very, very, you know, they would be easily like, oh, wait a second, this guy have this family connection and they have how many siblings he have, how, you know. So it would be very. No, no, no. I, I understand for me to completely. Say too much. Thank you. Thank you so much for understanding, Wash. I appreciate it. But after uh, Japanese was in, uh, vanquished, China broke into a civil war again. As you know, the Nationalist Party, the Kuomintang, and the Communist Party, the Gongchandang, Zhongguo Gongchandang. My grandmother was liberated, was liberated by the Red Army, led by Mao himself. Basically made her a communist for life. You know, who wouldn't? I, I would too, if I'm her. So that's good. However, you know, uh, during later of his rule, Maybe because he thinking he's losing a grasp of his power. Maybe he genuinely want to eliminate backward traditions. Mao started two things. One of them is the infamous Cultural Revolution. The other thing is he wanted to industrialize China as fast as possible. So he started a process called the Great Leap Forward. It, both of them was a massive, massive failure together. It causes 30 million people to starve at least and catastrophic ecological disaster in China, which I will talk about later when I'm talking about my field of expertise. After his passing, Deng Xiaoping, as you know, Deng Xiaoping, he basically coup the government, took down Mao's wife and other few, the gang of four, took over China in the 19, you know, he did a the market economy reform in the 1980s. And now this China turned into a country that we more resembles the China today. And then today, China is a rapidly urbanizing capitalist superpower, but still at least 30% of its population, noting this population percentage is larger, much larger than the United States, lives as peasants. And it is without a doubt a hyper authoritarian fascist one-party state that prioritizes stability, stability and centralized overwhelming power over anything. This is the only thing China cares is stability and power, or in other words, harmony, societal harmony. Or, oh, uh, Wash, would you mind if I do a Warhammer impression one, yeah, just go one more right, time, I'll, You've earned it. Go right for it. Yeah. <clears throat> Nothing endures without harmony, and harmony only endures through us. That was, you know, if you watch the Cassian trailer that was in there, I, I really like that. And also the, the, oh, you know what? I will just keep going to the next topic. I should stop. Well, hold, well, no, hold on. <laughs> um, at ch at chat, uh -huh. um, chat can't deny that you sound great when you do that shit. So they, they're sort of torn between. Thank the, you, the Chad. Soy I hammer, highly appreciate it. The soy hammer accusations yes. and also the damn, that sounds cool accusations. <clears throat> I think I, I want to ask really quickly. Um, 
uh, because um, I, I don't actually know that much about it. You said that there was effectively a coup after Mao. I know Mao's wife was taken. What was this? Was this like the coup that happened with Putin, where like the TVs went dark for a day or two, and then he just Not showed up on the TVs? Exactly. So, so what happened was this: when Mao passed away, he appointed a politician, well, bureaucrat called Hua Hua uh, Hua Guofeng. Uh, he was one of Mao's most trusted uh, member of the party. Uh, Mao literally call, uh, told them, as in, you do things, I trust you to do things. And when Hua Guofeng was, well, after Mao died, Hua Guofeng became the chairman. However, at the time, the gang of four, so there are three other uh, bureaucrats, as well as Mao's, as well as Mao's wife, uh, was still in power, but Hua Guofeng, as well as some of the other uh, old, like really old leader, was in the party. It includes Ye Jianying and Deng Xiaoping, <clears throat> basically uh, eliminated the Gang of Four and ended the uh, Cultural Revolution officially. Uh, yeah, well, it's not entirely a coup, uh, but Deng Xiaoping later also, dis well, not dethroned, but took away the power of Hua Guofeng and became officially the second chairman of uh, the CPC. Um, yeah, as well as the People's Republic of China. Got but Hua Guofeng was actually supposedly the actual chairman after, after Mao, uh, but, you know, his power was stripped by Deng and Ye Jianying. Yeah, I was just, I was curious as opposed to the amount of like um institutional uh instability the coup, the coup caused. But this seems like I, I, as at least by the it's, by the scale it's of Chinese stable. civil Dung conflict. Has a really good grasp. Yeah, but compared to the history of Chinese uh civil conflict, this is about as as clean as it goes, I feel. Um absolutely. <laughs> In, it's very clean. Yes. Um <laughs> Yeah, okay, so, so Deng um, starts implementing market reforms and essentially modernizing China, and uh, we arrive today, as you've described, as, a, as an authoritarian one-party state. Um, a very powerful one at that, too, very, very internationally relevant. I, I, I know that, and, and this is why we started talking right from the get-go. I mean, this was sort of the, the initial incident. It's that you're not satisfied with the way a lot of Western leftists talk about China and its issues. I mean, that much, I, I think, is clear. Certainly. Can you tell me... Certainly. Yeah, like, what's your experience with that? Like, what do, what do you... You, oh. you go online and you see it. Like, what's happening here, you know? So, I will give you... To begin, I will, I will start with a few personal um, experience. I know this is still not like a very good uh, way to begin the conversation because it sounds anecdotal. But uh, one time, uh, second thought, you know, he, I think he wanted to make a video about uh, Asian American rights. And he platformed, he platformed like a guy, uh, Bay Area ML, I think that's his name. Ah, uh, yes. I, I don't even think he's remotely Asian. It's like that guy never even showed his face and I don't think he's Asian. Uh, I could be wrong, but I don't think so. That means they're also genocide deniers, so I don't expect them to know anything about China, at least in a good face. And even actual Asian leftists, some of them are actually content creators, reach out to Second Thought, like, hey, why are you platforming this guy to talk over Asian people, over our struggle, over country that is associated with us? Not only he did not respond, he just started mass blocking us. In fact, many large tanky accounts, you would never see them interact with people who does not support the, uh, the Chinese government because they would pre-block Chinese dissidents. Mm -hmm. And generally speaking, for many Chinese leftists who our, our views on tankies, is we dislike them. Yeah, I, I, um, you, you talked mm -hmm. to me about this or you, you reached out to message like me on this. Um, but in China, leftist groups are suppressed. Marxist student organizations, union rights activists, worker advocates, basically every group that in the West is considered a leftist is in China suppressed by the government. And I never hear from those people, ever. I never look at a lefty channel and hear anything well, from or about those This groups. is the same. 
Yeah, this is why I really appreciate you gave us this uh, platform. The thing is this, Vosh. For a Chinese American or a Chinese person residing in America to have a voice, you only have two choices. You either work for the Chinese state, you work in the academia, or you directly operate a, a social media account, something like that, to directly say good things, praise the Chinese government. They are the leading force of socialism in the world and nothing else. They give you the script, you say it, that's it. Or you be like Falun Gong, you, you basically be this Asian POC front for American conservative power because American Western leftism is incredibly weak against a faction like CPC. Because first of all, most tankies, they don't speak Chinese. They cannot understand firsthand Chinese sources, that their information is limited to their own English translators, and all yeah, the same oh, time, can, can direct, I speak to that really direct quickly? propaganda from the state. Go ahead. I, so, yeah, I remember this, because I remember this issue was really, really weird with the, um, um, with the, uh, the Uyghur Muslim uh, camps that they were put in. When, the, when yes. the, the, the Chinese government had documents that leaked that described uh, detainment and arrest procedures, which made them look really bad. And the, the thing that I remembered thinking when that information got leaked is, wow, it is almost impossible to find a translation of these papers because the papers are leaked in Mandarin and Chinese or, or Mandarin is one of the most spoken and written languages on earth. You'd think like if documents got leaked in Spanish, there would be translations of them everywhere within two hours, like no time at all. But for some reason, despite yes. uh, Mandarin being so popular, the only translations of it that I could find were from like news sites that were doing very limited, like this snippet said that, this snippet said that. I didn't see any like, internet posts where it was like yeah i translated the whole thing here you go it was really tough to find and i feel like that might be kind of the reason why because the people who could translate it are very politically disincentivized to not translate it you know i mean if you are a chinese dissident the problem is this if you are a chinese dissident in the western world you often work with american conservative groups and you don't need to talk about a Uyghur concentration camp in order for you to do advocacy because their political ideology is far right Republican Christian nationalism that specifically focus on America, not minorities rights in China. And the people who are supposed to care about minority rights, lefties, first they lack the ability to translate because white people in America don't tend to be bilingual, uh, you know, not to say like they study Chinese, which is a pretty hard language. And so you cause this very weird epistemological black hole that I personally would uh, prescribe uh, that many tankies are new Orientalism. Are you familiar with uh, Edward Said and Orientalism, Fosh? The, like the original conceptualization of it? Yeah. Yeah, this idea of the Western world see East uh, Asia through the Western gaze that a, a, a unchanging world that can only be the contrary of Western world, that Western world is modern, the Orients are backward, or the um, Orients are, are cunning, but they cannot be smart. The best example will be, uh, like, for example, Fu Manchu, right? Like, he can be cunning, but he cannot be smart. He can never win against the, the Westerners because he lacks something essential. And in a way, uh, neo-Orientalism that is, yes, exactly, this human spirit. But, but the Tenki is a bit different with, you know, traditional, uh, for 20, you know, 1920s eugenic Orientalism. It is more of a ideological driven, desperate grasp, trying to see this hope from the East because the own innate lack of ability from the tankies, they, they cannot do anything. Their political advocacy is weak and like, um, unpractical, right? They cannot push changes here in the Western world. So they gaze upon through a Western oriented gaze, 
to look for some other alternative to form this campus perspective that multipolar uh, seek another great other to, to project their desire of change and the revolution. But that doesn't work because they cannot fundamentally actually understand what is going on in China or Russia, right? They, they don't speak Russian. They don't talk to actual Russian people. They don't speak Chinese. They don't talk to Chinese people. We don't have a voice. Chinese leftists in the Western world have zero, zero voice. Vosh, you are literally the un first person, one of the only person who have ever invited people like us on a platform. This is a jab towards SDL because I have scheduled something <laughs> with SDL years ago. That fear built on me. Okay, to be fair, I, I, was... I do not have a great track record when it comes to uh, quickly uh, responding to and scheduling stuff. So we, we, we love it our SDL here. It took you two years. I think... That's something, though. I yeah. really do oh, think... I respect SDL. He's a great meme creator. No, no, no. We, we, love, we love our SDLs here, folks. Yeah. Um, I, I think... Them. I think that a lot of it really, you said earlier, this is like a weakness of Western leftists. And I think that's true. Leftism in the West is really bundled up with progressivism. You know, it's not just like the worker dynamic. It's also the, um, the, the, the social dynamic, like race and gender. And I think that's good. Um, but it means that Western lefties are often really vulnerable to like, um, the weaponization of, of POC marginalization and, and politics. And I think that a big part of why Chinese leftists are so rarely heard, even on Western leftist spaces, is because it's so easy for everyone else to jump to accusing you of being like basically self hating and anti POC. Like, it, that's it. We, uh, if I could line everyone who dislikes me up and try to get like a characterization of you from what you've said, despite you having not said a single thing that indicates like self hatred or or, or 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 like you like America or you're like a cuck or whatever. I guarantee you that's the default they would go to. That is like the easy answer they would fall to. Ash, you wash. You have no idea how many times they accuse me of being a race trader, of being a Han Jian. <laughs> Han Jian means the trader of the Han nation. It is it is usually used during the World War Two to accuse people traded trader to the Japanese side. It is fascinating experience. You know, I don't really get mad. I just get disappointed. Yeah. You're seeing like a white guy lives in California and then calls me a, a race trader or, or call me, or what is it? What does it say? Gonzalo? I, I, I hope I'm not butchering <laughs> the, 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 the pronunciation. The people who call the, uh, the Cubans, right? Yeah, the, the Gusanos, yeah. When I am literally a leftist who Right, who have seen my friends getting persecuted, missing in China, and I come to the West and I see things like this happen. Yeah, you know, you see a similar dynamic in a lot of other directions too, because it seems like if you are a leftist or progressive who belongs to a country that does not have good relations with the United States, it's really difficult to get a left perspective from that country because so many of the people who turn over from it are financially incentivized into... Um, either shutting up or right-wing grifting. Iran is a good example as well, right? Like, there are tons of Iranians in America, or former Iranians, um, but how often are, like, leftist Iranians or expats, I guess, heard, even though there should be a ton of them? It's because I feel like it's that too, right? Like, it's there's either an incentive for them to do the right-wing, like, oh, you know, I'm a former Muslim kind of thing, or nobody's to listen to them because it's you know, they, they fall so easily to accusations of self-hating or whatever. Yeah, but also, Vash, you have to understand that the largest Chinese-American media the, uh, that is owned by Falun Gong, the cult, uh, called Xintang Ren, the new, uh, actually, how did they translate themselves in Chinese? I mean, English. Actually, I'm not sure. It's, oh, it's, um, it's uh, the, 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 the uh, Epoch Times. I know the Epoch Times is uh, the Da Ju, and that's the that's their newspaper. They uh, their media company, I think, is called oh, uh, oh. basically direct translate to New Chinese. You can look them up on uh, they have a YouTube channel. Anyhow, um, there is a huge amount of money, and and that directly incentivizes people to go to the right wing grift. Uh, let me give you an example. There was a very famous Chinese billionaire 
called Guo Wengui. He moved to America through a uh, political refugee because he basically got into a political scandal. The faction that he supported within CPC. Also, CPC is not a uh, united front. It is, it is a gigantic party with you, uh, uh, tens of thousands of bureaucrats that forms local, regional, and oftentimes ideological driven factions within the party. Mao Zedong himself said that uh, means it would be really weird if within a giant party there's no factions. Anyhow, this Guo guy, he's a billionaire, well, he was, and he moved to America about, uh, I think, 2018, I believe. Immediately, he was catched up with Rudy Giuliani. <laughs> and then he connected with Steve Bannon. Steve Bannon became one of his personal friends that helped him to run a gigantic uh, Chinese-American focused media empire. He was a big deal in the uh, Chinese-American uh, community. And because Chinese-American has a lot of money, he grifted so hard that uh, what is that platform Steve Bannon created? That uh, Vash, uh, not Vash, I mean, Trump was on for a bit. Um, uh, I forgot. Oh. It was. Yeah, I'm blanking, Anyhow, I'm blanking too, um, but I know what you're referring to. But, oh, Breitbart, Breitbart. Yeah, but a, lo yeah, a lot of the money was brought by this um, Guo billionaire, Guo Wengui. No one in the American world, in the uh, American mainstream media, even heard about this guy. They never mentioned anything about him. Do, be, be, do you think and it was also, be, they were just disinclined to talk about it because of like racial issues, or they just didn't know? No, they don't know. There is a, a again, that's why I said earlier, an epistemic black hole, because mainstream media in America wouldn't pick up Chinese story, because why would they? Everyone who works for them don't speak Chinese. They don't have any source or even clue to find this information. And they don't work with Epoch Time because they all know Epoch Time is a kind of a joke of a media company. But they have a lot of power and money within the Chinese American community. It's the same thing with a lot of um, other type of alternative right wing media in uh, other first generation immigrant community in, in America. I remember uh, John Oliver actually covered an episode a focus on the disinformation spread in immigration uh, immigrant community in america mainstream media really lacked the ability to combat them because they cannot be the alternative to these immigrant community their english is not good enough to listen to msnbc and cnn they have youtube and they look at these big follow and youtube algorithm help these company as well because if you don't use english they won't algorithm will not give you these videos, right? So you will constantly be in this bubble that is surrounded by these alternative media run by these right-wing group that use these languages. Yeah. I remember the first year I came to America during high school. Um, immediately, YouTube started giving me anti-China, like Epoch Time adjacent propaganda videos we, we don't this really just have ridiculous making crap ups yeah we this is a problem with like the american assimilationist attitude i think we a, a lot of people's attitude towards immigrations even people who aren't like necessarily racist even like left-wing people it's just oh we have all of these immigrants from korea japan china india you know pakistan whatever all over the world haha -ha. um you know they can do whatever they want and we're just going to do our stuff in english and whatever smile and i and the big the big weakness here right is that like you've said a lot of these communities don't speak english well enough on average to really engage with those media sources and that means that they're much more susceptible to falling down certain pipelines so the the american yes. assimilationist attitude ends up kind of guaranteeing the assimilation doesn't work because there's no effort to reach out because i i can't even think yes. like you're right. I can't even really think of like a mainstream media American Chinese correspondent. I know they exist, but they don't have enough media prominence to do the work they need to do. And the public conception of China is so like a lot of this is because of the war in Ukraine. But I know 50,000 times as much about the way Russia operates internally than I do China. When I, when I think of China, the only two things that I like immediately pop to my head are what a, like a single party state with absolute power and B, 
a bunch of like ghost cities that will one day be populated that are built in like the the, the <laughs> valleys beneath misty mountains. And because that's all you see, you see TikTok videos about how China is in the year three thousand, and you see like authoritarian repression stuff, and that's it. Oh, they got him. Oh, uh, Wash. Hello. Oh. Hello, hello. Sorry, I think there was like a. Oh, there we go. We're back. Welcome back. Sorry, there's a little bit of a signal jam. For some all, all good. Happens all the time. Um, yeah. Hopefully it's not uh, this, the CPC is on us. Probably, probably not. Um, but you, you get C me, right? There's a CCP agent among us. Like, I have strong uh, yes. cultural... Yes. I, I, when I think Russia, I don't just think of the government, right? There's so much Russian literature. There's so much like stuff specific to Russia. And when I think of India, even though I don't know much about India, and I don't think the average American knows much about India, I think that the average American could probably refer to a kind of general understanding of its cultural richness and of its variety and its diversity. But with China, they have been successful in that like unity through strength thing. Because I think China, despite being so big and so popular, and so varied it is difficult to think of it as anything other than like you know uh, a single block i know logically that it's not it's just that imaging is 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 really effective yes yeah, so you mentioned about a really good point wash that china uh, from the surface looks like a big book right which i think maybe i can use this to lead to the next point i want to say that one of the things, I know this sounds a little bit off topic from what we were just talking about because we're talking about Asian American. We'll come back to Asian American after uh, we go through some of the things because we've been spending a lot of time talking about things that we, me and my uh, friends who were helping me collecting all this information was not originally thinking about. Of course, of course. About. Yeah. So I want to. Oh. Would you mind if we go back to some of the topic I was originally no, thinking no, lead, about? No, no, lead the about? way, friend. Go right ahead. Thank you so much. So the the next thing I want to talk about is how Chinese government control the discourse. By discourse, it's a uh, not Twitter discourse, but uh, the Foucauldian discourse, the creation and operation of knowledge. Uh, it's it's like uh, you know how America have controlled media. Uh, all media company are owned by a few gigantic corporations, and they have strong incentive to make sure these media company don't see anything that hurts the capitalist interest. China, on the other hand, it's every single media and media company are controlled by the state. They may have some different opinion on specific topic, but overall, their goal is the same, to preserve societal harmony. And through that, it generates the discourse, as in here again, knowledge and creation of it. Wash? Yes. Are no, you with us? No, no, I'm, I'm fully oh, with you. I'm yeah. sorry. I, I, I didn't know if you were going to continue that point forward. No, no, yeah. Um, this is, this is like, we're, we're treading into territory that, like, legitimately I don't know that much about. Most of my coverage of China has been in the context of the, um, the, um, the, uh, the Hong Kong protests. And there's some stuff uh, recently is with the uh, Naomi Wu disappearance, the, the YouTuber who... Uh, yes. Who who got yoinked? Yes. So um, I I like honestly I could just listen yeah. to you. Uh, for Naomi Wu, it is very sad. I not I do not know her personally, of course. Uh, though I know her a while ago because she's more kind of a gay icon in China. Not a lot of Chinese people know her because Chinese government would not allow a woman with gigantic breasts with see-through clothes to show up on the internet, but. A lot of people kind of know her, and a lot of Chinese people who can use VPN to see Twitter or see Western media a little bit know her. Um, she, her girlfriend, she's lesbian. Her girlfriend is a Uyghur Muslim. Not maybe not a Muslim, but a Uyghur ethnic. And probably the reason why she was always in China, despite her connection, will probably be able to let her get out of China, is because she wants to keep her girl partner safe, which is really sad um and um i i don't really know what really happened to her uh there's a chance that she just get a phone call tell her to stop doing what she do which some of them happen to some of our friends in china who are leftists i don't think she's like a leftist leftist she's not like ideologically driven 
but more like a, I am a gay woman and I enjoy having lo making love as a woman and I have big boob and I like tech things. Just let me do the things I enjoy. But because her existence challenged the system of the ruling philosophy, certain part of the ruling philosophy of China, like patriarchy, she probably got silenced in the end. Or by knowing her, more Chinese people may get educated on what is lesbian, what is Western sources. You know, they could be one of the reasons why she got silenced in the end. Yeah, I know. But the, I do um, not know what exactly happened to her, but yeah. I know the party's cracked down a lot recently on um, homosexuality. Uh, no, I, I mean, obviously, they've never been great about it. But I remember, like, the uh, yeah, banning but, uh, feminine men from being on TV or something like that it was pretty wild. Yes, that is something that did happen. Uh, however, so what happens, this is a fascinating phenomenon that American does not have a grasp to understand. So in China, we have an old saying called 上有政策,下有对策. That means the, when policy comes down from the top, the peasant smart can always outsmart it in certain way from the bottom. That means Chinese government being fascist as they are regularly censors cultural product. This year they could just delay certain kind of anime. They watch do you remember this anime called Darling in the Franks? Yes. It sucks. It got censored in China. <laughs> uh, it sucks, but it got censored in China. Oh good. Or it's finally the Chinese called, government uh, does something I agree with. <laughs> Yeah, uh, there's another anime called Sarazanmai. Uh, it's a pretty good one. Uh, and oh, Sarazanmai? Yeah, wait, uh, Sarazanmai uh, slaps. It's amazing. I love it. It's, I mean, it's directed by one of my favorite Japanese directors, but it was censored because two boys kissed each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep, yep. And uh, yep, Kaba cannot kiss each other. No. And uh, yeah, so... However, if you go on Chinese internet today, you can probably still find places you can watch these online. Same thing with Finboy. Legally speaking, China has made a move. They will say like today from this not from this day, we will ban this certain thing. But then who's gonna reinforce all these bans? After a few months when people kind of forget about the bureaucrats forget about it because they have more things to do and more things to censor this is just gonna slowly comes back. You know, you can still find people who are technically Finboy on Chinese internet. But, you know, the best example of this would be uh, porn. Porn is illegal in China. You can get arrested for selling or just simply having them. There is a very famous uh, video. There's a very famous video software that was uh, very famous for really good at torrenting porn and it's called uh quite book and uh it was the the ceo as well as the inventor of the uh, software was arrested and put in jail for spreading porn even though he was just made a really good torrent software it, it's very sad however chinese people still view porn in fact i i'm certain it's one of the biggest country that consume porn because you so you have so many people and so many incels. Chinese <laughs> yeah. incels. <sighs> oh yeah, no, I I, I so, know. Yeah, you've got like there's like 35 million more guys than there are girls within the same basic age yeah. bracket. Yeah. Great job, uh, one child policy. There's so many female babies was murdered. It was, it was very sad. Um. My family is lucky that we are fairly educated, so that, that never happened to my family. But I know I definitely got a lot of privilege for being a man. So anyway, I'll get back to the topic I was supposed to talk a little bit about. Of course, of course. cover, importantly. Well, Wash, well, it's kind of funny. We so far, uh, we only covered one of the four things I wanted to cover. No, Don't worry. We're uh, doing maybe, great. This is by the standards uh, of the conversation. By the standards of the conversations that I've been having uh, lately, this is actually like un unimaginably good, flawless, pristine, couldn't be improved upon in any way. Um, no, please go right ahead. I am honored. Yes. <clears throat> so the one, uh, because of my uh, profession, my field of expertise, I want to talk about uh, conservation, ecology in China. So uh, as you may know, climate change has been ravaging through many places in the world. 
Americans actually, I would say, have it lucky. You Americans, even in 50 years when sea level rises to a catastrophic level and climate change ravages many parts of the world, do not despair, chatter. We will make through this, okay? You guys gonna lose what? New York, Manhattan, Florida, some part of maybe New Mexico, I don't know. China? Utterly fucked. Okay, that's not, this is an understatement. The amount of population of Chinese people who lives in the coastline is like twice as the population of American, like United States. It's like, like literally what, eight, everyone in nine China. Nine billion people living. Yeah, that's and my, almost, my understanding of, of China. Cities. Yeah, no, it's my understanding of China is literally it's like 800 million people on the water. And then there's a gigantic rice farm that stretches across the entirety of the rest of the um, the country or upon which five people cultivate. Um, yeah, you are all on the water. Yes. Um, and uh, I can send you a link of estimation of sea level rises. I will send it in a chat. Please. For free to check it out, fellas. Uh, it is very grim, and because Chinese government is not a religious fascist government like the Republican, they don't believe the world is going to end. They don't want the world to end. So credit where the credit is due, Chinese government had done a lot more efforts coming to America, building a lot more, also one of the quote-unquote, I mean, I would say this very quote-unquote, and, you know, do, do this, I'll do this, imagine me making a pippy face when I'm saying this, <laughs> a positive side of being a highly hyper authoritarian country is that you can build nuclear factory nuclear power plant wherever you want you don't need to worry about people protesting about it okay the shit happening in germany never gonna happen in china because people don't get to say we're gonna build nuclear power plants okay so <laughs> no it's a legitimate uh, advantage it's yeah. actually you know, it's there's a lot of talk um, nowadays in the West. China inspires all of this talk in the, from 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 like Western authoritarians about how like China has unveiled the problem with democracy. You know, you have one project continuing for many decades without like new people unseating it every time. It's it's like that genuinely, it's it's like inspiring the worst people on our side. And also remember, China has really good train. Okay, so credit where the credit is too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have been on those trains. Rail. If you ever go to China, watch, you got to take up one of those trains. The food is not very bad. It's terrible. The food is terrible because it's controlled by oligarchs who only were super corrupt. But the train are good. There's, okay. way, but there's no anyway, way Chinese food is bad. It's so good over here. Train food. Tra like, oh, train food. People, okay, gotcha. It's like highly processed food. Chinese food, amazing. However, certain American city may actually have really really good chinese food that can compete with real authentic chinese food in china in uh you know i i shouldn't give my location away but i can tell you in new york there is a few really good restaurants i can send you the location of it to you in discord after the convo sure and Probably. also a few really good places i've visited in other cities okay yeah if you want to try to try it out okay yeah, absolutely. Anyway, I, over here, um, over our, our delicacy over here is uh, Panda Express. So if you ever get a chance to have that, you Yes. Should. Yeah, of course. Oh, I have. My grandmother say it tastes like wax, and she would rather die than eating these things. And <laughs> I agree with her. She also, she survived famine, and she refused to eat Panda Express. Um, but yeah. <laughs> but so, so anyway, nervous. speaking of food, I need to get into this really important point. Mm -hmm. Wash, do you remember how we get COVID? Um... Where did COVID came from? Well, it was, uh, well, I, I heard it was from a lab in Wuhan, actually, where your people maliciously designed. <laughs> uh... No, uh, yes. not that? Um, I, I, well, I mean, you know, I don't really know exactly what happened. Chinese government had destroyed every evidence they have. The wet mark. However, right? most of the academic ambiguously believe it's like SARS is because some Chinese people ate wildlife they shouldn't eat. And the, the wild animal ate other wildlife, for example, bats, and then they carried it to human. So this, I want to talk, use this as an opportunity to talk about a very important thing from a conservationist zoologist about China. How much do you know about wildlife trafficking, my friend? Essentially nothing. Okay, so, uh, all right. Now time for me to shine as a zoologist. China has some of the largest wildlife trafficking market in the world. 
It is horrible. Uh, Chinese ha China have a long history of consuming wildlife to gain supernatural healing abilities. You know, they're, they're saying you, you get things from eating tiger bones and uh, saiga antelope horns and most, most famously uh, shark fin soup, right? Rhino horns, exactly. Rhino horn. Rhino horn being, rhino being hunted in China for their horns for medicine and also they use it to make cups. But however, it, that, it did leave to every single rhinos in Asia extinct in, Asia, in China and all other species of rhinos population devastated because of this. It is, you know, and I can go on the list. There's a huge list of animal being hunted directly threatened by China. Um, like the pangolins, they're all critically endangered because of this. Certain countries like Indonesia even make a profit by poaching their own pangolins and sell it to China. That's why I don't like certain countries in the world. It is horrible. Uh, and in fact, they even threaten certain American species like the anteaters and antelope, uh, like Aww. the armadillos, because their claws resembles that of a, an, uh, of a pangolin. So they also get poached because pangolins are so rare these days. It's very grim. And I can send you a New York, um, New York Time uh, article. And you, can, you and Chatter can take a look at that. It's a really, really good summary of how Chinese traditional medicine destroys many species of wildlife today. And China as a government is horrible when it comes to conservation. Uh, Chinese, the degradation of the environment of China is anthropogenic, you know, human caused, and is catastrophic. It uh, started thousands of years ago, but it mainly exacerbated during Mao's time, during the Great Leap Forward. He's seeing just by human power, he can change China. Basically, even, I would say, terraforming it. But in the end, he destroyed so many part of the environment, and endangered many species of animal. Have you ever heard about China trying to wipe out sparrows? The war against sparrows? Yeah, I, I have heard rumors of this. I do not know much about it. So Mao think there are four, the, the four pests, the rats, the uh, flies, the mosquitoes, and then the sparrows. But then they replace the sparrow with lace, I think, the bedbugs, uh, because they turns out have catastrophic uh, consequences. Zoologists try to convince Mao is a terrible idea because sparrows are good, and then they got sent to the desert, uh, the exile. So Chinese people started killing every single sparrows they see. The, the most, the animal that got uh, hunted the most is called uh, uh, yellow-breasted bunting. You can look it up. It is, uh, used to be very abundant species. Now they're critically endangered because their population had declined for 99%. Of because Chinese people keep eating them. They think they can eating these animals can also make their pee-pee go big. So <laughs> uh, that's never good if you're an animal and Chinese people believe you can give them a boner. Um, so yeah, they they kind of ended up like dodo birds and traveler uh, pigeons. Yeah, but, well, you know, hey, I can maybe. Uh -huh. This is an actual like leftist aspect of Mao's regime because a distrust of birds is actually a deeply Marxist principle. <laughs> so if nothing else. <laughs> Uh, in that case, you Americans are all leftists too. Remember, you guys wiped out a species of animal that have some of the largest biomass in the world, the traveler pigeons. Yeah, that's true. You know, the buffalo, back, we nearly yeah, got them. Back in the days when, yeah, they can, they can cover the skies when they travel, and you Americans just drive them to extinction with shotguns. It was, it was Listen, fascinating it how was, you guys did to the dead pair of... Okay. It was an accident, okay? It was, it was a joker uh, gamer moment of America. But yeah, so China, and a few more examples I want to use in this case. I, I'm beating a dead horse at this point when it comes to conservation in China. But um, if you guys want to look up, there's a species of animal, fish, called the white sturgeons. Mm -hmm. They're like the Chinese cousin of the American pedalfish. Have you ever seen a pedalfish? They're these weird looking fish with a big spoony head and a filter feeding mouse. You've seen them in your Yeah, aquarium? I'm pretty sure I've seen them before. Hold on, you, let me, let me, uh, let you me. Can, you can look them up. It's, look them they're up. really funny, ver uh, funny fish. Yeah, show, show it to the chat if you want to. Yes. Uh, you're playing game. Yeah, I understand. Oh, wait, I don't tap for the links. Though. Don't look at the game. I'm, my ears are with you. The game's muted. Wait, this is huge. This, the, the, the lake, the lake sturgeons, right? Oh, uh, no, uh, the pedal fish. Oh, um, hold on. How does that spelled exactly? 
Okay, let me, oh, great. Uh, P-A-D-D-L-E-F-I-S-H? Okay. Yeah, F-A-D-D-L, uh, P-A-D-D-L-E-F-I-S-H. Okay, gotcha. There we go. All right. They look funny. Oh, they've got big noses. Yeah. I see why and they're they that. have a Chinese cousin. Beep, beep. Uh, they have a Chinese cousin called, called either called the Chinese petal fish or Chinese people we call them uh, bai xun means the white sturgeons because they're, they're yeah they're huge they're like the mean cousin of petal fish it oh, looks see. like them oh they, they are horrifying ferocious predators they have deep sea angry oh, yes. jaws yes that is weird oh well no don't, uh, that's that's a filter feeding. That's a filter feeding mouse. That's a no, no. That's a petal fish. Uh, let me give you the. Uh, I'm looking Chinese paddle uh, fish and Yangtze sturgeon declared extinct despite yes. conservation. Wait, they're yep. they're gone. Yep. Yep. I want to use them as an example. What the? F Remember? Oh, that's a bad picture. That's not a Chinese petal fish. Oh well, blame Western let, media. Let me give you a better picture. Okay, please do. Uh, Western media. That's actually not a Western media. That's a Chinese-sponsored media. Oh, shit. That's a Southern China journal. Yeah, they're, they're owned by China. Yes, they hate themselves. The, the, uh, they're owned by uh, Alibaba, one of the biggest, like, the Chinese Amazon. Uh, the guy who owns the company is kind of a funny guy, but, yeah, he... Uh, but it's, it's bad. Yeah, they look like that. They look kind of weird, right? But, yeah. Um, yeah, and they're it's gone. It's very sad. So... They went extinct because remember you uh, did a research, a little bit of research on Chinese huge dams that they built during the cultural uh, Great Leap Forward. Yeah. The Sanxia, the, the big one that generates so much power, it wiped out their um, breeding ground. These fish, as well as many species of Chinese sturgeons, requires they need to swim back uh, backwards up on the river to lay their eggs in shallow water. The construction completely wipe out their natural habitat. Also, they keep getting bycatch and overfishing. Chinese fishermen, I swear. Uh, I have colleagues who work for ocean conservation, and then they, you know, uh, capitally breed endangered species of sea fish. And then they bring the baby fish, like, they're a the tiny little fish, like, the, 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 because they're babies. They let the fish out. They, you know, fish go into the ocean, be free, and grow big, and have children. And... On the other side, you can see fishermen lining up trying to catch the baby fish. Mm -hmm. it, it's they're very poorly educated. I want to go mean on them a little bit, and as, as well as my people, but I don't want to. I understand it's because they're not educated and they don't have the opportunity and resources to learn. Uh, Chinese government directly <laughs> resulted this. Yeah, I mean, well, uh, yeah, it's, yeah, the so, average person doesn't know anything about species con conservation, so it's not, you know, it's uh, it's always but, you know, uh, I, 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 average. Yeah, yeah. I know this sounds gonna be really racist, but I I don't want to go into. Yeah, I hope I didn't come off like racist you know, or something like to my own people. No, so, but yeah, not even a little. Um, yeah. So, thank you. Yeah, but, I, yeah. The Yangtze River is pretty much because of this. I uh, I miss them. I want the fish and, back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I, me too. Uh, we do have specimens of them. Maybe in the far future we can clone them. But I'll continue with two really important things. Uh, climate change has caused this disaster in China for the past few years. There is huge amount of drought and flood, and Chinese people have suffered because of this. Even this year, they just survived a ty huge typhoon pass through Hong Kong. And the Chinese government silenced this course relating to climate change disaster, uh, and especially eco-activism. Chinese government have this, I would say even basically just a campaign to demonize eco-activists. If you go online, if you go into a Chinese video websites uh, that most of the young people use, and you look up eco-activists, or Greater Sunberg, you're gonna get result that is regurgitating similar talking point that Steven Crowder would use. Do they get treated like national traitors the, the same way that ecological activists are over here? Because that's the big line is, over here. I will give you two story and I will explain after the story. So uh, there are two stories I want to use uh, to talk about how Chinese government controls the discourse, right? Does it, the government doesn't just Barge in and tell everybody, hey, from today, I'm going to silence everyone, right? Uh, it's a gradual uh, way, and they manipulate people. How, like, how 
all, all the government in the past man, manipulates people to become, you know, mindless mobs, right? In yeah. this case, I will use two good examples. One of them is called the paper club incident. Second one is the scientific squirrels and the Guokur incident. So the first one is called Paperclip. Paperclip is a non-governmental organization uh, that are a independent media run by a few geek tech bro. Rare, rarest W for tech bro. <laughs> rarest W. They try to provide easy access scientific education uh, to the Chinese public. And around two years ago, they made a video about how Brazil is burning down the Amazon rainforest to supply the global meat industry. Mm -hmm. The takeaway is global meat industry is terrible and climate change will cause disaster. And, you know, Chinese people should be more aware of these things. However, the video was unfortunately picked up by really bad face actors, possibly from the state. I know. I don't have like a you know document from the government right to say right that, yeah oh, we're gonna can't take them prove down. it just but feels then, that way yeah but then what happened was many other independent media who are state-sponsored responsible for radicalizing and regurgitating american right-wing talking point these media are openly far right they sub what i'm sorry <laughs> Give me a moment. Sorry, I, I think I need to drink a little water. Oh, I yeah. talk too long. <laughs> water is good for you. I've heard rumors okay. of this. It's good for fish, yeah. too. Of course, Wash. <clears throat> yes, thank you. Uh, one thing interesting about the independent uh, media that was uh, criticizing uh, or uh, starting the witch hunt to Pepperclip is that they will regurgitate directly, uh, word to word, outright talking points in, from America. In fact, this type of processes have started back in um, 2012 to 2013. Uh, I have started to, like, when, even when I was a youngling, start to recognize that, wait a second, these talking points are not organic. A lot of Chinese people don't really have this type of um, argumentative that is so similar to a lot of Western sources, because when I was younger, uh, my family is, again, well fluent. I studied a lot of English. I have more access to, our, uh, to Western media and a lot of American sources. At the time, I was already sort of engaging in some political uh, ideas. Even though what, back then I wasn't a leftist, I still already know some talking points from American alt-right media. But I was just really surprised when I started to see them in China, in on Chinese internet, regurgitated directly by state actors not yeah. just anyone i mean later today we see uh direct chinese party affiliated people uh talking about like great replacement uh lgbt yeah. uh queer phobia lgbt issues and um like um jewish cabal these type of things that chinese people shouldn't really care about right like how there is very little jewish population in china most of them are descendant of world war ii jewish refugees yeah, it's, there's no Jewish people in China. It's where's this anti-Jewishness? Yeah, where it came from? We've seen this mm -hmm. in in a lot of other countries. It's so difficult to imagine this influencing China because you know China is so large and powerful. Like you know, it's not like like no, I can understand the state. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's like I, it's easy for me to understand how the American far right has exported its talking points to say the far right in France or Italy. The the mental image of like Chinese government officials talking about like George Soros is so insane to me that it's like actually disgusting. Um, oh, I, I, not. Fascism really is international, oh. I feel. It's incredible how quickly those talking points flow across borders. Oh, yes. Uh, not Chinese official, again. Not Chinese official would never say these things. Oh, no, no, sorry, I'm sorry. I miss, oh. uh, yeah, sorry, I misspoke. Not Chinese official. Yeah, yeah, Chinese, but like in, in cultural, yeah, yeah like pundits. state-sponsored media. Yeah. Yes, pundits, yes. Um, uh, so yeah, but back to the, the thing. Mm -hmm. So, but the fish hunt goes from, goes on for months. You even see bad fix actors taking selfies of them eating meat to like, like, you know, how meat eater triggers vegans is similar mm -hmm. to right, that. Yeah. So their takeaway is, so the conspiracy accusation eventually evolved into Paperclip is a foreign power planted NGO trying to strip away Chinese people's rights to eat meat. And Chinese government all of a sudden showed up 
banned the account of Paperclip. And everyone give the government a round of applause, cheering on the government, finally taking down these race traitors. Mm. And the second story is a little more personal and sadder, because the second story happened to some of our friend uh, or adjacent. So uh, this independent media is not only dedicated to spreading science, but it's far more professional because it's actually formed by scientists. It's called the Scientific Squirrels, like the animal squirrel, and also a technology website that's also formed by the same group of people called Gorker. Uh, G-O-U-K-R means the nutshell. Uh, it's like, you know, squirrel crack opening a nutshell, revealing the nuts inside for the Chinese people. You know, it's the science knowledge. Interesting. That's, the incident, that's, that's quite cute, yeah. actually. And also is a Stephen Hawking, uh, and also I think is a Stephen Hawking slash Hamlet uh, reference is yeah because the people who created it are all professional scientists the website is very left-leaning uh they are a staunch supporter for the me too movement they uh talk about sexuality very positively they talk about advocacy for um climate change uh however similar thing happened a few years ago uh, I actually really appreciate one thing you covered on your screen on your stream one time. You talked about the seven seven hundred and thirty one unit of Japan, mm -hmm. the one that did uh, human experiments on Chinese people. Yeah, they did a lot of uh, stuff. And yeah. oh yeah, uh, so there was a rumor a few years ago for some reason that uh, you know there's a thing that we think is real, but it's actually not a real scientific fact that humans are seventy five percent made of water. Yeah, um, is uh, it's like sixty percent. No, I, I actually don't know the real number, but the rumor says is the reason why we know it is because a mad scientist from Japan squeezed Chinese civilian dry so they uh, calculate how much water there is, and then that's how they got the number. Of course, it's, it's buffoonery. It's not real. Uh, and the, uh, a scientist from this organization, the Scientific Squirrel, he's, he's a biologist slash a paleontologist. Mm -hmm. He writes the most fabulous essays. Uh, talked about how is this obviously misinformation. And then huge amount of backlashes was thrown at them, claiming them, them they're traitors or straight up siding with the Japanese invaders. And just like what happened to the paper clips, the government later showed up and shut down the most influential scientific independent media in China on the behalf of the well of the people. Okay, um, so... And from what I know... Hmm? Oh, so, okay, so this, so this seems... This seems like a consistent dynamic then. The, the state officials themselves keep an above it all lofty attitude where they don't get into like the super gritty, dirty, far right propagandizing. But when the far right propagandizers stir up enough attention, the, the, the government gets to put up its hands and go, ah, ah, well, okay, well, if so many people are concerned with this, and then they basically get to act as, they, they, they get to act as though they were legislating on behalf of the right-wing interests while pretending they're just responding well, to, like, civilian complaint. Remember how Elon Musk had a vote about whether or not he should be the CEO of Twitter? Mm -hmm. It's like that, but China actually controls the poll and who gets to comment on them? When China doesn't want you to say negative things about them, remember, so Chinese government system has this unique censorship system that will detect the text you text. I can literally not say Xi Jinping eat shit because it will detect me saying Xi Jinping. And then it will, I will literally not able to post that comment. And then the system will tell me, you are not allowed to post that because I have detected you have things that are sensitive to post. Okay. It is the most dystopian thing ever. Same thing with uh, search engine. Search engine, literally, maybe they don't do it anymore, but a few years ago, I still remember if you search for things that are like Tiananmen Square, the search engine will tell you the things you're searching is sensitive information. So I will only selectively present the information I get. Um, do you, I, I meant to ask that as well because it's talked about so often and so poorly understood mm -hmm. could you please explain mm -hmm. to me what the hell the social credit system is okay okay um i did not live so for the past few years because of the covid i didn't got good chance to go back to china and stay there for a long time however from what i have know is that 
social credit is an icky thing implemented differently in different regions. China has, you know, your American can tap when you pay credit card now. Mm -hmm. China have do that for 10 years and they evolved into a closed system in China. If you want to buy things in China, you cannot use any American credit card. You have to use a Chinese credit card with your personal information attached to it, your Chinese personal information, which means if I am a white American who says Chinese, I cannot buy anything, even online service of China. I cannot buy membership of a Chinese music app or social media, or even engage in Sony social media because I don't have Chinese, uh, uh, Social security number, the equivalent of Chinese social security number is called Shenzhen Zhenghao. It's like the little code we have on our own personal profile, uh, like IRRID. And uh, social credit used to be kind of a jokey myth, only a- apply to influencer or someone who actually triggered the government. Then, you know, they will get, they're not allowed to leave the state, they can't get on train or buses. Uh, so the, most of the people think it was a joke. However, yeah, now it have uh, changed dramatic. Uh, dr- uh, mm. It's it's kind of like credit score. You know, your credit card credit score that is related to your personal credit, how much credit card you use, and debt and stuff. That is tied into. It depends on the region. Also, again, it depends on the region. Some regions don't really use it, um, uh, but it can. If you, for example, stayed in America for a while or you haven't uh, do a lot of commerce in China, uh, your, credit, your social credit score will drop. Uh, there's also other type yeah. of way for you to have a lower social credit score, but it's, it mostly operate like credit score, but more omnipresent. I'm not saying credit score is not omnipresent too. It's everywhere in America. It's, it's, it, it's, it's a draconian system in America. I, and I think it's, 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 Oh, it's kind of on a similar part. Uh, yeah, I think I, I on a similar part. I don't mean to social to credit in any way downplay like our credit system. But the thing with the credit system that we have is like it's 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 purely economic. You know, like the government tracks. Well, not necessarily tracks. The the credit score system is so, so stupid. But like it's it's basically like tracked by banks. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. banks track it, but it's also like they communicate with each other, and it might as well just be like another number, like you're like nationally accounted for. Whatever the case may be, it's like an economic thing. But my understanding was that with with the social credit system, it goes like um, you, so like you said, it can be dinged for some stuff like doing out of state. But likewise, is are, is it possible to be like penalized through it? Like if you're a social media dissident and, and then like one it day you go outside be. and like- I, I, Again, I haven't by? been- um, it, it can affect how, like how you use your credit card and your uh, accessibility of using a credit card. For example, I remember there was a um, documentary BBC made and I personally think that documentary was really poorly made and really poorly tried to explain what social credit is. In fact, this is the problem I have with a lot of Western media. They focus on the most minute, stupid bullshit that they can get a diss on the CPC. And they just completely ignore on the, the actual stuff because they don't speak Chinese. They are not Chinese. They don't know what's actually going on there. They can only, again, using this Orientalist gaze a, as a criticism. But again, so social credit score, uh, it can be. So, for example, if you're a political dissident, as the BBC um, reporter have um, recorded through his um, documentary, if you're a political dis- dissident, your social credit will be naturally lower than a lot of our people because the Chinese government don't want you to get out of your province or even city. So if your social credit is low, it will affect on how you use train, public transportation, or even just use a vending machine. Um, if you're, yeah, this, this what happened if your social credit is low. Remember I told you my girlfriend, my girlfriends can't buy a soda? Yes. Chat, is everything all right? Oh, oh, oh I think chat spooked because by the concept. Saw- chat spooked, I'm pretty sure of the concept. I mean, I'm pretty spooked by the concept. Like, things are pretty scary over here in the States. And I mean, you know that you watch the stream, you know what's going on. But like... The, the the concept oh, I, I, I currently lives in America. 
No. Right, well, right, yeah, yeah. I mean, you so you know all of it, but like it, it, from living here from day one, right? Like from everything that I've experienced as an American, the idea of things getting scary or worse is very much on my mind pretty often. But the idea of, um, I guess I just can't really imagine not having free speech. It's just, it's legitimately just not something. When when I think like, oh, you know, living in under a government where like you could just say the wrong thing and they could arrest you, you know? Oh, that's like, haha, that's like those dystopia novels. But that's actually like half the world population, you know? It's just really weird to think about. It's genuinely like a, a hitch of mine, I guess. Um, I, uh, I'm glad you're over here in the land of the free, buddy. Yeah, <laughs> so much, so much for the land of the free. Yeah. Well, it's getting worse uh, over here, so soon we'll, you know, there will be yeah, no free right. speech anywhere. Well, I, I have some face. <laughs> I know this sounds kind of cocked, but you got to have some hope for things like this, you know. Yeah. Oh, I wanted to we ask you. We shall endure, and we will survive. Uh huh. No, I wanted to ask you about that. Like I said, it's difficult to think of China as anything other than like a hegemonic political bloc. Um. I think in very large part due to intentional messaging. I wanted to ask you, you said that it's not hegemonic, which of course it's not, but I want to know more about that. So, you know, one thing that I've heard is that the supreme power of the Communist Party is largely overstated in a lot of it. That China is so big and so complicated that, sure, technically they have like total control, but there are many provinces where their control is practically very limited. I mean, you talked earlier about how, like, the peasant can work from the bottom to undo rules given from the top. Um, how how much wiggle room is there? I mean, how how much is the totality an illusion? Oh, I remember that uh, a few years ago I was talking about a f with a friend of mine who's a political dissident who actually is a also official. He is a local small bureaucrat Based. who got the job because like he he it's a very stable job in order so in china in order for it to become a bureaucrat you do a state test like traditionally how we do it it's just tests on different things instead of confucian um uh, text you study uh marxist text and you study sort of the administrative work type of uh textbooks and then you do the test and the higher you scored more likely you're going to end up in a higher position in the, as a beginning job and which is kind of a funny system to think about because in America, officials are elected. In China, the people who are elected are what you call anyhow, and they don't have power. Anyhow, um, so about the wiggle room, I was actually talking about this with him because he worked for the agency that captures and specifically deal with peasants who believe in Falun Gong. <laughs> And uh, he was talking about how a lot of local agencies are starting to lose grasp. Uh, Chinese, right currently speaking, a lot of weird eccentric cult, and many of them came from America, evangelical Christians, are spreading really fast in oh, Chinese cool. countryside. They're not good. A lot of them are really, really ghoulish um, um, uh, evangelical Christians. But this sort of shows, in a way, that Chinese CPC are losing some of their power. However, this was kind of reversed by Xi Jinping by implementing so many levels of control. It's a kind of a level of control America cannot imagine. Uh, like everywhere you go, because the social credit system is direct link to your personal ID, everywhere you go, whenever you make a purchase, the government knows where you are and if you don't have that you cannot buy or just live it's it's a very complicated system it's not that doesn't help anyone also you need to have a smartphone in order to live in china if you are an old person who doesn't have a smartphone you just have cash on you often in time you're not going to be able to make simple commerce because you don't have the social credit system saying you know, like logged it's 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 pretty bad but that's sort of a, a not a desperate but a very effective way of control. Okay. And that... one thing I want to, uh, one more thing. No, please. Uh, uh, I just had this idea pops up. I didn't wrote this in the script because somehow I forgot about it. China impl largely extended their power during COVID time. China, you remember, China had these completely shut down of cities and have people like starving in their own house. Yeah. And so China during that time, make everybody 
download apps in the name of controlling the pandemic. And afterwards, it does not take that power away. The civilian system was built thanks to COVID. It was, well, you know, as dystopian as you can get. Using a, a, a gunman, I, I'm pretty sure most Vashites wouldn't know who he is. He's an a interesting post uh, a structural right, a theorist from Italy. Uh, the, the logic of the state, it will always be control, discipline, and sort of this adding up to a, a, the policy is always about adding. And for, for the biopolitic of the state in order to preserve itself, it must strengthen its control. I mean, this is not unique to China. Look at uh, George Bush uh, Jr., what he did with Patriot Act, or the current administration in German and France. I mean, China do it the best. China is the best on doing authoritarian uh, and capitalism that we have ever seen in human history. And all the other states around the world will copy it because it is effective and GDP don't lie. Well, it might. China might be in a, a whole lot of shit show in the near future, but they will use the more shit they got, the more strength and control they will urge their, their policy to become. It's very sad. I think it's just, yes. No, no, I, I, I completely understand. The big, you've heard me talk about this, I'm sure. The big thing that I've talked about with regards to huge changes to China's governance are that there's pretty much an inevitable economic downturn that will come as a product of your very weirdly shaped population graph. Um, when, when, all of the, when all the people who are born, like, uh, you know, um, after the, the fighting stopped, World War II, like, age into retirement or whatever. Wait, they would have already aged in. Uh, at the end of the famine. The end of the famine, that's right. The, the, um, the famine in the early 70s uh those the generation of my parents yeah. yeah yeah they're going to age into retirement and when that happens you're going to have a hugely topsy-turvy population graph and that economic downturn is probably going to destabilize things at least a little bit at least that's what i've heard do you think that's true or do you think that's copious hopeful mm -hmm. yes and we well i know i cannot predict future but things are going to be bad in china it's going to be bad and ugly Climate change, economic downturn, people getting older. They try to save it by, uh, right now they're pushing for not just two child policy, three child policy. Yeah. In fact, one of the reasons why they really hate queer people, one of my guess is that this fundamental notion of the bio-eccentric, essential uh, function of people, right? Like your function as a Chinese citizen is to study, Get ready for job, work, and have as much children as you can, you little, you little fox. So if you are queer, and you don't, you are not guaranteed to have children. Well, that's a problem. We have a problem here, don't we? So in a way, one of the reasons why I think China have really weird control on queer people is because of that. And for the queer rights in China, it is, you know, I have a lot, of, most of Chinese leftists are made up by trans women. <laughs> Obviously, that's just similar oh, to a lot of Well, country. naturally, of course. The minority they're, group, yeah. They're loud right? One everywhere. of my girlfriend is a Chinese trans woman. Yes, I, I love nice. them with my, all my heart. I love, both of them are taller than me. One of them is Slavic, one of them is Chinese. I love them. It, it's um, the fate of trans women uh, everywhere to be taller than their boyfriends. Yes. That's just how and they're beautiful. it works. Uh, but, yes. Um... Where was I? Oh, yes. But in China, in many regions, I do not know, do this, are they still operating? But not long, even not long ago, conversion therapy is rampant in China. Yeah. Conversion therapy. Like, they would literally tie people to chairs and then taste them. Or force them to detransition by injecting testosterone into their body. It will cause horrible uh defects and melt their skin it is really sad to look at however they basically get away with no punishment because well you know it's it's, it's for the stable for the great societal harmony and one of the things i hate the most triggers me and my fellow leftists the most is how so many of these so-called tankies who call themselves gender liberationists and queer communists and 
trends rise in their uh, t- Twitter pro- the profile saying a hundred times, and then they close their eye when things like this happen again and again, and then Chinese leftists bring it up, they actively deny it. Yeah. All they do, Chinese government also do a tokenizing. In China, there used to be this one, there's only one famous trans celebrity. She is a trans woman called Jin Xing. If you look her up, G-I-N-J-I-N-G uh, X-I-N. She's a beautiful S X I N. Yeah. G I N G X I N G. Yeah. Uh, my father is sitting across the room Hi, like, Dad. nervously watching. So he, he was just like, I don't want to get arrested. Offer next time I go back to China. I, I, my son got to be really careful not to mention anything about our personal information. Our family is fucked. But yeah. Uh, so yeah. Uh, he's just correcting me uh, on the other side of the room. She Thanks, looks dad. lovely. Yeah, I love my dad. He's a wonderful person. Yes, he's a wonderful person who loves my partners. So the best dad I can ever think of. But um, where was I? Yes, so she is a famous dancer, and she was very famous having her own talk show back then. But a few years ago, uh, she all of a sudden, all of her channels got deleted. Oh. Um, not deleted, but all of her channels got discontinued. And I... S- I think that happened in 2019. Oh. That would have been Let around look the it right up. time. Oh. Also, I misspoke. Uh, not channel. Uh, shows. She is not an internet celebrity. She's pretty old. I mean, not old, but like she's in her Right, 40s. right, yeah. She's uh, her old me- um, legacy media. Yeah. Yeah. She, uh, the reason why she can get a, so much attention was actually because she was born in a, a pretty well-fluent family. Her father is a um, pretty powerful military guy uh, in Chinese army. So when she transitioned and want to become a dancer, she had the social credit as well as the social, not the credit, like credit system, but the social uh, resources to engage in a uh, way to make her perceive as a almost uh, semi-cis. Her queerness is kind of erased to the uh, Chinese public. I'm not saying her trans identity is invalid. Absolutely, she was one of the most iconic trans person in China, and I'm proud of her journey and her dedication to, for herself. However, she rarely talk about, talks about her own trans identity. That's something that she doesn't talk about, as well as her politic is similar to almost uh, Caitlyn Jenner. Uh, she's pretty conservative, like she has <laughs> been, um, so uh, she has been the like uh, what is it? What do you call it? The judge on uh, China have talent, like you know America have talent. She used to be a, a a judge there, and sometimes she will even tell girls on the show, be like, uh, "Y'all are not behaving like a woman supposed to in a, like a traditional Chinese patriarchal way." That that which makes, is that makes sense. If you if you're such a visible minority in that in a, in a space like that, it makes sense that you would have to lean in really hard to traditional femininity and conservative standards, um, to to avoid because because if she was like a like a public trans celebrity and also super progressive, I imagine that would be like too much. You know that would that that would get her in trouble. That's my guess. It's like that over here at least. But you know, it is really. How to say this? Like, triggering to see Tanky using her as a token to suggest, oh, look at one famous celebrity in China who's trans who also get her show canceled in China. Well, I think I, I think what you said how earlier, progressive China is. I think what you said earlier about Orientalism still is the case with these Tankies, just with a different kind of relationship. The Tankies view this like the the East as a block, as just a kind of sort of undifferentiated mass of revolutionary potential. And their relation to it is every bit as like chauvinistic and uh, domineering as the ones that the British, uh, you know, the, the the British colonizers would have had back during the Opium Wars. Except instead of the whole like, oh, we're here to bring you civilization. Instead, it's like, oh, well, here's our interpretation of the Marxist lexicon, and we will impose it on you like vicariously through the Chinese government. And if you have problems with it, exactly. then like you're you're rebelling against nature, basically. And because you see that a lot, right? Yes, ta- we ta- have tankies mm-hmm. don't even acknowledge the existence of leftists. Like, I I have heard tankies. No, I, have... I have to say, I have to say this. I have legitimately multiple Please. times from different people ref- hear tankies say that. How can you be correct 
when 1.4 billion Chinese people disagree with you, as though every Chinese person is like an ideologue who holds the same position. It is unironically the most racist shit I've ever heard. It was from a person who called themselves a progressive socialist. Like, the idea that every Chinese person is just naturally a Maoist, the same way, that, as if any of them are, right? Uh, in the same way that, like, <laughs> like, 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 birds know to fly to warmer areas during the winter season. Like, like, they, legitimately, I think it's colonialism all over again, except we're not we're not the colonizers, but there's like a small subset of people who have that same sort of like, I'm, I'm rambling. I'm sorry. I agree with you completely. Don't worry. And also wash. Know this. Next time you ever see these tankies saying these patronizing bullshit, tell them, send them a good f you from a Chinese. Okay. I give you that pass. You can represent this Chinese to tell them to f off. Okay? I will. I'll even, even do your voice. Like Hassan. I'll oh. do your voice too when I say it. So thank, that they really... thank you. You shall repeat like a celestial dragon. I can't. I don't, yeah, I don't want to get in trouble. Just right for now. the bit. Please don't do the voice. Please don't do the bit. Because, it, you know, I can do it because I'm Chinese. I, I think you understand. Um, I'll tell again, them that we need balance uh, through strength. Back to, um, yes. 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 Um, but yes, again, neo orientalism in the 21st century. Again, Asian voices in America. We, we don't have, in the Western world, not just America. We don't have agency. We don't have subjectivity that can be presented. Our narrative can only be channeled through American conservative racist rhetoric. Like this is why American uh, conservative love to use Asian immigrants to uh, you know, do their biddings. Like uh, the reason why affirmative action was uh, revoked by the Supreme Court. Um, uh, uh, or you have the choice of uh, conceding to the Chinese state and Chinese government really, really love to position itself in this new orientalist di dynamic. Why? Because again, Chinese government is also pushing a rejuvenation of the great China. The past is glory and we shall find our position as the central kingdom again. The, the, that positionality, that sort of fascistic narrative fits well in the new orientalist Never, it's the same thing. I remember, I remember well when I saw, uh, I, when I was in college and uh, I saw this paper I was uh, reading just for fun. And it was a paper written in uh, Tsinghua University, a top two university, one of the best universities in China. And it was one of the shittiest paper I've ever seen. What is it about? It's about Orientalism. And what is exactly it's about? It's, it's basically saying, uh, Orientalism is bad, and colonialism is bad, and this is why China will retake its place as the center of the world, and just like how the Western col colonizers defeated us, we will defeat the rest of the world and take our place as the real Orient. I was like, what the hell are you talking about? Edward Said would like, like, he would be so pissed if he knows that his theory has been utilized by, the, uh, by a authoritarian state to push for this self-antagonizing orientalization. You know what's interesting? It, it, it's very... What, yeah, what you're describing yes. is actually practiced by um, a lot of fascist pan-African groups. Um, groups that take advantage of the legitimate indignation and rage at what Europeans have done to Africa. And they do this like, ah, well, they think that darkest Africa is real. We'll show them darkest Africa. Like, we will become the glorious, like, pan-African warrior tribe. And it's like, what the f*** are you people doing? But, like, the, the fascists will reclaim mm. the colonizer's language to describe themselves. It's, it's very weird and not good. It's not good. I mean, I mean this is the thing. Uh, uh, uh... I don't want to say anything about Pan-Africanism because, you know, uh, there are good I, forms I, of Pan-Africanism. I don't not, have authority yeah, yeah. on this. There is, yes, there's many legitimate liberation movement that is directly, re, you know, result in the benefit of the African people. Um, but, you know, again, I'm, I'm a Chinese person. My uh, knowledge is limited to ecology and some um, um, political theory that related mostly towards my own positionality in this world. And Warhammer uh, Fantasy. But world. however, yes, it is. Yes, I, I, not just Warhammer Fantasy. Well, well thanks to my artistic um, <laughs> uh, hyper-focus 
I, I know so many lore, La Elder Scroll, uh, Forgotten Realm, I mean, uh, Chinese fantasy world as well. There's a uh, many different amazing system. Yeah. I can do traditional Chinese storytelling of the entirety of Journey to the West. If you give <laughs> Wait, me really? enough time, I will tell you the story of Monkey King. Yes, I'll tell oh, you the shit. story of Monkey King eight hour nonstop. Uh, oh. okay. This is how I got my girlfriends. Is I, I just stumbles like they love me because i'm goofy I, I'm... no no no. I, lo I love the idea also of like the the autistic rizzler in in china being like all right i'm gonna tell you all here's here's my like wukong oc you know um the original it, so of all of the crimes committed unto china from japan um the greatest of them by far was uh appropriating and then becoming the most popular version of the uh, the tale of the west in dragon ball z that's bullshit okay we need a revival of Absolutely. the chinese the original i'm sorry oh fun fact mm -hmm. i want to tell you something funny about the monkey king and uh, goku so china wanted to have their own kung fu panda they want to create their own dragon ball for years and chinese censorship system destroy china's own cultural products because no matter what you're gonna do, you're gonna accidentally trample on the line, and who knows? They, they, you know uh, Coco, the Pixar movie? Yeah, yeah. That movie almost didn't got released in China. Really? Because, uh, yeah, because it's about ghosts. Chinese government hates ghosts. Oh, Anything yeah, what related is up to religion. With, what is up with them with skeletons? However, Yo, yo yeah, they, they, they censored everything in, uh, in uh, World of Warcraft, so they have to replace it with bread. Old Warcraft player, I know, I know exactly what you're talking Why? about. Why? Oh, speaking of uh, two two things, I really need to mention about these. Like, there are kind of disoriented points, but I need to mention about this because it's funny. One of the things is, uh, crap, crap. I I got myself disjointed. Uh, oh yes. First thing, China want to create their own Monkey King, and oh, Coco, yes. So Coco got only got released. Because the people who do the censoring, they need to watch, they watch this movie in this little dark room, sit like 12 state bureaucrats watching it intensely, writing down every point they think is a, something that would tread the party red line. And then they watch, they, they get it to the end. The little boy playing the remember me saying it to his grandma, great grandmother. Uh -huh. And everybody cried. It was like, oh, everybody cried. It was like, who doesn't have a love? grandma in their house it's the good old filial piety tradition of china I'm like god damn it you know what american you got us this time you 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 will we will publish this movie we'll release this movie and everybody cried i cried every time when i watched that movie at that part because i love my grandmother so much and it always reminds me of her. I, I it's a good movie. Yeah, but that's that's the very, second thing. That's very fun. I'm just I'm just imagining yeah. like a council of like 300 yeah. dusty like 85 year old Maoists in army uniforms that have their arms folded and their eyes set watching Coco <laughs> completely unimpressed. And then all of them start like sniffling during the scene. And then and then they're like, all right, you you American pig dogs, you can you can show it. Um. It's very, yeah. very funny. And the uh, second so you thing have is, to explain to me what, you why the about, skeletons? Huh? Why, why, why did ske Why are they? Why no skeletons? It's again. It's about state have to have the total control of narrative. So again, uh, because China is uh, CPC is a communist party in name, Marxism, uh, 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 historical materialism. So no religion can take in forms of. Uh, in media, they cannot, like, unless you're talking about traditional Chinese culture. If you are, like, uh, anything depicting modern or um, uh, uh, elements of, like, afterlife, especially for media, for children, state bureaucrats hate that because to them, it is a, like, a, like a thin line to break from the Chinese state's total control. Another joke we have in China, in modern Chinese uh, internet, okay? We call it uh, as in yokais couldn't form their spirit after the, C, uh, the PRC formed. Because that's the moment where mat historical materialism rise, uh, Marxism bring the, the red dawn and the, take, uh, beat up all the traditional bad culture that related to spirituality. So no more magic. No more gods. And Mao, Mao it, it's consecrated like in the entire Rain, Chinese you know, mainland, yeah. Yes, it's like, you know, once the CCP is formed, 
every elf flee to the west. You know, flee fight to the west. <laughs> that means like Lord of the Rings style. So they go down their boat and they go into their their land with their novellas. Um, but yeah, where was I again? All the uh, oh, yes. all the skeletons well, in thing. your body dissolved into into dust. Yeah. Yes. Remember, I told you Chinese trans girls will get thrown into a conversion therapy camp and they electrically shock them. Yes. This practice, no joke, was originally created to target wall players, World of Warcraft players, gamers, just gamers in general, but mostly World of Warcraft players because it was so popular. This motherfucker called Yang Xin, uh, Chinese people would make a lot of jokes on him, and he was, he was yeah. even a skin. He Yang, was even a, Yang Yingxin, a, a right? character from. Yeah, there was even a character from. Um, uh, what is the that's 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 too down. It's like a, it's like a Chinese, uh, not Chinese, like American scary cooperatory game. There's a character that designed based on him, and he believes <sighs> World of Warcraft or video games in general will generate addiction. There's this game addiction, and I can only fix it by torturing kids, uh, tie you up to a chair, and they electrically shock you, and. Uh, not just kids, they sometimes even grab like people with doctor degree into it and then they, they torture them. It's crazy how Chinese parents, you know, you know, the government upper structure sometimes also determine how people think. Uh, yeah, one thing that uh, just one <laughs> just critical support yeah, critical of the Chinese support Communist to, to Party. against the yeah, gamers, yeah. huh? Yeah, for for League of Legends, yeah, if they but can keep one, that going. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, well, this practice is not gone. Uh, it's mostly kept in more conservative provinces like Shandong and Henan, uh, very famous, really conservative northern Chinese provinces. Uh, one thing I want to mention is, uh, you know, when people say, oh, Chinese government doesn't have like law against queer people, it doesn't usually have a stated, uh, you know, uh, policies that discriminate against queer people or like just m minorities and such. And in, in name, uh, China to the outside world often say, oh, I'm progressive. See, I have this affirmative action policies. I, I, I have qu hate crime laws. Well, first of all, Chinese hate crime law was never enacted, not even once. Um, and more importantly, the Chinese state don't need, don't need uh, to have policies and uh, direct control sometimes on a lot of issues on young people. And why is that? Because Chinese family, Chinese sometimes modern nuclear family, sometimes more extended traditional Chinese patriarchal family do the job for them. Disciplinary system doesn't only engage in the form of state operandi. It also comes in the form of families. And the Chinese family is very powerful. Um, so, for example, like what I said earlier, Chinese fam uh, parents have the rights to control their children, uh, not even like, even after the age 18. For example, trans people cannot medically transition without the consent of their parents, even after they're adults. Oh. Whew. Things like this are actual policies and guidelines in China. And uh, adults, again, if you are a, a gamer, and you are heavily addicted to games, even you are not living with your parents. Your parents can contact um, uh, the, these conversion therapy camp, and they will basically send almost Simon mercenary to capture you on the street, drag you in a van, and then take you to the camp. Really? And, you know, you'll actually talk to you and do conversion therapy. Yes. Uh, yes. Yes. Didn't, it's didn't very the, scary. I mean, America is the same. Uh -huh, go ahead. Didn't the Chinese government recently pass legislation to limit the amount of time that the youth could spend playing video games? It's been a while, because in order for you to play games in China, you have to, again, have your little ID card ready, type in your ID number, so they will know your age. Like, the, the amount of ID are involved in doing anything online in China is crazy. People cannot, in America, people cannot imagine how controlled your, like, daily entertainment is in China. It's very, very controlled. Jesus. I mean, freaking hell, games are banned all the time. And, uh, you know, like Steam, Chinese Steam, it's a separate system. Like Chinese yeah, Steam. Yeah, yeah, everything's kept. Don't really, yeah. yeah. And, and it really. They're um, kept separate. It, it makes it really difficult, I guess, to know what's going on over there from our perspective, too. I just, I don't really no. hear. Well, like, the comparison, the comparison is so obvious, right? Because, like, 
Japan, so Japan, Korea, and China are countries with a lot of differences, a lot of similarities. You're all in roughly the same area. If you're an American, right? Like Parasite, a Korean film, won an Os multiple Oscars. We've seen Parasite, right? We've, we see Korean cinema. D anime, J Japan, huge influence here. What influence does China have over America? Well, a lot, like politically, but in terms of culture, how much Chinese media have I or anyone watching consumed? I'd be willing to bet, despite the fact that China is significantly larger than than Korea and, and Japan, probably very little. The only thing that I can think of, unironically, is Genshin Impact. China's been breaking into some, like... Exactly! That stupid shit! Yeah! It's well, just a ripoff of... No, of the, yeah, but of, it's of still... Zelda. It's something. Like, like that. But it's weird, right? Ohio. It's weird to yeah. think about. Yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah, it's just weird to think about. Well, China trying to... Yeah, China trying to build their uh, soft power for a long time now. It's always been in their propaganda, internal propaganda, to talk about building soft power, building soft power. But... Um, in, but actually, the, the result, because of their censorship, it drastically stopped their ability to create better media. We have a word for that. Mean uh, we call it 带着脚料跳舞. It means you cannot dance with chains on to Shackle. your shackles onto your legs. Chains and shackles are very similar. Um, that that makes sense. Yeah, it seems like it would be a, a huge dampener to cultural growth. Like like America, American culture is is huge internationally, but so much of American culture is immigrant driven. Like it's it, American culture is almost entirely built out of um, all the different perspectives, and I know that happens in China too. But like having access to the rest of the world is a pretty huge part of that. Yeah, uh, immigrant. Oh, uh, I, you know, um, gosh, do you want me to talk about something that would be a little more sensitive, like uh, racial speaking? Oh, I would love to, but um, there is an issue. I um. I, I need to go soon. We we're at two hours. Could I have you on again? Oh crap! Tomorrow. That would be a pleasure. I would, I would love to do that. Okay. Um. I'll I'll email with you and for, before for I leave. Specific time. Yeah. Yes. Please. Please. Yes. Yeah, certainly. Bef before I leave, I want to have this. Oh no. Uh, I mentioned about. I'm going to mention Hassan. And this is how I'm going to mention him. <laughs> yeah. Click on this link, watch my friend, and all also right. all the chatter. Or you can, I don't know, see what Wash saw. Uh, I, this is a, if anyone can clip this and send this to Hassan, my assaulting sense. All right, we've got it up. Are those I have, I have this, I have this to say to Hassan. So those are Asian small called river otters. He is in Japan when he did this, and this is something that's very unique to Japan, but unfortunately have spread to China and Korea too. Remember I told you East Asia has a terrible, terrible track record when it comes to wildlife trafficking? Mm -hmm. None of these otter was probably born in captivity and it's incredible to breed them. They probably smuggled into these terrible cafe, into these places where people play them like toys, put them under stress, and it's just horrible practice. However, Hassan, you know, he doesn't know. However, you know, this, the, the, the builds up, he made many mistakes. And also, you can see this in our cafe. So when Wash and you other people, other fellow Washites, when you visit Japan, never visit these places. If you see that if you have cats or dogs in it, sure. If it have sheep in it, why not? Wild animal, never. And he's basically supporting a industry huge industry that smuggles animal not even just in japan but possibly from america uh they smuggle even turkey vultures from america i don't even know who want to pet a turkey vulture they poop on their own legs to uh, lower their body metabolism and temperature but well they japan managed to po poach them from america and take them and shovel them into these cafe it is terrible um so if someone want to send this clip to hassan i would Greatly appreciate it, and also tell him he know nothing about Taiwan and China, and please shut up, and or at least read about it before you talk about it. Like supporting Chinese police brutality in in Hong Kong, brush it over like that. Like oh, oh I know it's bad, but there is no but, Hassan. If you are truly a principled leftist, as you claim you are, stay with your principle. That's it.
This has always been my main issue with him as well. If you're going to say hello to an otter, you have to go and dive into the sea and catch it yourself. And, and I let truly appreciate Chad. You guys are awesome and so loving. Uh, I appreciate talking to you guys. Yeah, I, well, I've had a delight talking to you as well, and I look forward to doing it again tomorrow. Oh, certainly. And thank you for your platform, Wash. Not at all. Thank you very much for coming on. I'm sorry it took so long, but on the plus side, the, the second oh. gap between the first and oh. second time will be uh, significantly shorter. <laughs> Absolutely, and I'm grateful for that. I'll talk Have to a you wonderful soon. night, Wash. You too? It is a very pleasant time. Yes. Take care. Yes. Oh, before I leave, can I say one more uh, thing uh, from Lord oh, of the Jays? Yeah, you you uh, caught me from, with, a, uh, Ming. with a nanosecond left before I hit the button. Yeah, hit it. Oh my gosh. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Um, I will say this to wrong dissenters. Okay. <clears throat> Gangzhuo, you are governed ugly by stupidity. And spite. It was it was it was the audio uh, quality good. No, no, it, it worked too, great. Uh, I, he, loud. he just resigned, is what I heard. It worked. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh well, uh, if he does not, then I shall fill his carcass from the nearest mountain top. You know, I would just transform him into a golden statue. <laughs> uh, free speech uh, in Roblox, obviously. Um, well, you know, in, in Roblox, obviously, obviously, I would never do. I'm a scientist. I do not do any. I barely involve in anything political. And tomorrow um, you yeah, can make a even, thousand curses to the fact. Even more uh, accented, thinly veiled threats at public officials. Have a yes, wonderful night, man. Certainly, certainly. Have a great day. Have a great night. Take care. Well, that f rolled. <laughs> I can't believe it took so long to talk to this guy. Yeah, we'll 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 do like the whole conversation in a big super block like tomorrow we'll talk more and then i'll just be like a fucking giant five hour video he should be a voice actor that shit is crazy man when when i when i was out of it at the beginning of the convo it's because i didn't remember whether or not dino man was actually chinese and i didn't know whether or not i was about to get in trouble with him doing the accent i think it's funny like um i i know i know because right off the bat it's like well, if if you're doing the accent, like it's it's racist or whatever, it's like it's racist to have that accent. Can we just admit, like outside everything, that that is a sick accent, like the stereotypical accent of like a Mexican person or like whatever else. Like I I don't know. I feel like oftentimes insulting. That's like oh here's a stereotypical Chinese accent. It's like holy shit, mountain warrior. Oh my god, incredible shit. Well, I mean obviously he was playing it up for the the Grand Cathay bits, but still. Um, Damn, it's really, it's really wild. I can't believe I've, it's been this long. I look forward to talking to him more. One thing I will say, this is the actual like Chinese W that I will say, the CCPW, is I genuinely feel like it wouldn't be that bad of an idea to have a government provided cell phone with some apps um, that tied into like local civic stuff, you know? I know there's a million ways that could be abused, but considering that in the modern world, you basically need a smartphone to exist anyway, like that's already a thing, you know? Um, the idea of having some kind of standardization with apps, I'm thinking maybe like traffic, wouldn't that be cool? Like imagine if the government had like a contract with Google or Apple Mouse or whatever, and it's like, what traffic is gonna be up? Well, like here, like here is the traffic. Like you're not guessing, it's not like algorithmically determined by traffic patterns or whatever. This is, this is the civic map of traffic. Um, one thing that Seattle has that I really like that's kind of gotten me onto this is that all Seattle public parking runs through the same app. Um, I forget. It's, ca it's called sometimes like Seattle Pay Parking, Parking App Pay, whatever the fuck it's called. But if you're doing any street parking anywhere in Seattle, you can just open up your phone, open the app. It'll say, hey, you're right next to this parking, uh, this, this like parking grid. Is, are, is that the one you're parked at? And you go, yes, time, dude. Bam, like that. And it works like for all public parking. And it's like, damn, that's that's cool. Uh, I don't know. That's pretty good. <laughs> and it's not being done in like a nefarious way or whatever. It's just a f app. So Seattle also has a great bus app. Yeah, yeah. The transit app for Seattle is really good as well. So stuff like that, you know, I feel like that'd be a good idea. Greeting, boss. How you doing? <laughs> doing all right. Uh, I went out today with some friend. I actually got a little nervous. Because I didn't know when are you going to start streaming. I was like, what happened if Wash decided to stream 
uh, at 11 a.m. <laughs> oh, oh no, no, sorry. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I should have said same time, like right off the bat, um, because, uh, uh, yeah, I, I, I had a bunch of errands to run today as well. I have about an hour today, not two hours. Um, for okay. though, for those of you who weren't present yesterday, um, I, I, I talked with Dino Man two hours, and we talked mostly about like a leftist perspective on China from a Chinese person, of course. And we covered a lot of ground, and we're going to cover more ground. So I think I think the editors are going to like bundle this all together. So they're just going to like splice them in. So we're we're back, okay? It's like it's still yesterday, Lana Man. All right. Uh, okay. So uh, where were we last time? I think we were. Well, I had a couple of questions. Oh yes, actually. Uh huh. Of course. So um, a lot I, there was a lot of positive reception to our conversation. People. Uh, wanted me to ask you questions, and I ignored almost all of them because I don't respect my shatters. Uh, but friends also asked me, so I'm I'm sort of channeling them. Um, I I wanted to know your opinion on. Um, do you know the Wandering Earth? Yes. Oh, that's a perfect uh, topic to talk about because there's so much thing I can say. Uh, the creation of this film and uh, the people behind it oh there's so much to talk about um do you want me to talk about this in the long way or the short way because there are actually a few more topics i want to add in because there's a few things i say i want to talk about later but i forgot to go through it with you last night yeah well i wanted um, to talk one of the topics that i wanted to touch on was okay. like the um Chinese media being broadly disseminated in ways that are kind of propagandistic. So I, I'm okay with you hitting it uh, long, and then I uh, we will we will be efficient with with the topics as they proceed. But please, yeah, everything everything you have in mind. Of course, and you know this. I am certain this will not be the only time we got to talk. So, all right. Uh, for the uh, wandering nurse. Oh, and also Wash, before we all oh, Destiny Origin, all right, fine. Uh, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm just I'm nice. sorting my I inventory. Was... I I'm ADHD. Don't don't be uh, able no, to No 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 my friend. I was thinking that I was originally thinking asking you to play Total War Warhammer 3, open a Cassian campaign and play the Iron Dragon where we're talking about China with my voice of the Iron Dragon. Mm. I think that would be very comedic. Like he like he he speak down there and I speak up here. All right, fine. I understand. I, play, I, play this, I genuinely feel like at the moment that would melt my computer because I have a, a couple of my fans shut off for maintenance. I genuinely don't know <laughs> if I could stream that right now. All right. So on the topic of one second mm -hmm. of the wandering nurse, it is a rather interesting topic to talk about. The person who wrote it, his name mm. is Liu um, Zhongjing. Oh, my bad. Um, Liu Cixin, Liu Cixin. Uh, Liu Zhongjing is a completely different chi uh, Chinese pol political figure. Mm -hmm. uh, a, a even more wacky one, but... Yeah, Liu Cixin. He originally had a degree in electrical engineering. Uh, Chinese, many Chinese people call, give him the uh, nickname of Liu the Electrician because of that. Uh, mm -hmm. The funny part about him is that he is a massive incel before he started his career uh, by uh, writing the three body problem. I read the book. Uh, I also read a lot of his shorts. Uh, I gotta say, he is a pretty good sci-fi novelist. However, most of his work and him, the, all of the thing he talked about before he become a celebrity, because he actually has a equivalent of Chinese Reddit account and people doxed him and we sort of know what his politic is. It's yeah. abhorrently fascist. He would, uh, one time he went on the interview, uh, the uh, host asked if you, three of us, there's three people, a professor, him, and the host, who is a beautiful young woman. Uh, the question was, if three of you landed on a desert island, I know, sounds like a coconut analogy. I'm it ready. was not. The question was, what would you do? His answer was literally, oh, uh, me and the professor will eat the host because that preserve the, 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 the civilization of humanity because I'm an electrician and the professor is academic. So cannibalism, let's go. It was 
it was unhinged. Kind of, kind of based, to be was... honest. Very direct. You know, a lot of people wouldn't be willing to own up to that. Oh, and another uh, funny, interesting. Um, he actually specifically talked about Uyghur gen uh, concentration camp as well. Uh, he specifically quote uh, the the media asked him, uh, "Would you rather have?" Oh, sorry, I think that he said it himself. Let me read. Um, would you rather that he that, that they be hacking away at bodies at train stations and schools in terrorist attacks? If anything, the government is helping their economy and trying to lift them out of poverty. He's referring to the event that uh, not as bad as 9-11, but previous to the uh, building of concentration slash re-education camp in Xinjiang, there was a um, train station terrorist attack happened in Kenton, I believe. It was uh, seven to six terrorists with machete, and uh, they they basically got to slaughter people. I think about thirty people injured, uh, at least a dozen people dead. Uh, I I don't have the number on top of my head, but a it lot was of people. A, a lot of, it, to China it was a lot of people because people don't have guns, people don't have uh, explosives. So what they can do was, oh my bad, it was not in it was oh, it, it was uh, it was in Kunming, not in Canton. It was in Kunming uh, because one of the only first time outside of Xinjiang, that there were terrorist attacks that happened uh, from the East Turkestan independent movement. Um, my view on the East Turkestan independent movement is pretty mixed. Because on the one hand, on the one hand, the uh, autonomous self-autonomy of the uh, Uyghur people should be respected. And it was promised by the Chinese government in its establishment. However, I don't think random Chinese civilians should pay for the brutality that was uh, given to the Uyghurs by the CPC. Uh, so anyhow, the, the, the writer, the author of The uh, Wandering Earth, as well as The Three Body Problem, his politic is very bad. Um, the, the terrorism is bad, of course, but I don't think the Uyghur people <laughs> is deserve to be categorized as this block of ter potential terrorists and be treated as subjects that sh uh, uh, objects that should be subjugated to a authoritarian control especially in the form of concentration camp yeah it so seems back to the like movie it's, oh yes yeah it's 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 like i mean i guess it's like 911 or it's like the um the concentration camps that we kept Japanese citizens in on the West Coast uh, during World War II, where you 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 know you want to oppress a minority group and you leap at the excuse to, as soon as there's any kind of pretext, like because I remember that a lot of the stuff internally within China was referred to almost like um, like a uh, war on terror, right? With the Uyghur Muslims, it was like ah well the you know yes. yeah we need to do this actually. Um, it is a kind of a. a... Oh, not analogy, but uh, step by step. If you look at the step by step comparison on the rhetoric against the Uyghur mi minority, as well as the just general Islamic phobic rhetoric that was um, you can collect online or from the Chinese government, uh, it was very similar to how George Bush Jr. did. And <clears throat> sorry, um, I I think I walked a little too long today at the uh, the zoo. But um, <laughs> got some exercise. Yeah, yeah, it was it was all right. It's just you know the weather is getting a little cold, getting chilly. Um, but um, where was I? Ah, oh, yes, the Islamic phobia. Um, rip, uh, I'll get back to the topic uh, later because it's actually a quite important thing that I forgot to talk about yesterday uh, regarding to Chinese government controlling the discourse. Mm -hmm. uh, regarding that movie, you know, the movie was originally written by this. Uh, basically fascist person um, and one of the other important producer who also bring a lot of money into the uh, I would say the studio or the overall production is called Wu Jing he is a very famous uh, Chinese actor slash producer he's the person who was in the wolf warrior you can see him like a Chinese uh, Arnold you, you know Arnold I can't really pronounce his name other than we making can, it Don't worry, really we can't either. I get you. 
Uh, yeah, and uh, but imagine him be less muscular because you know Arnold is one of a kind with his body reacting to steroids, and ten times more massage. Oh, well, that's unfortunate. Majestic. This guy had been on a popular talk, and yeah, there was literally yeah, you know, well, uh, well the most famous guy who make a. Uh, overtly nationalistic propaganda he also turned out to be uh, a misogynist well who have thought but he literally was talking he had a i think it was on a tv show was a talk show host by him and he, the whole shtick is he's making fun of a feminine man he's like oh i'm this big macho macho man and then this is a feminine man and just gonna decide to bully him and he's acting not like a traditional masculine man ah oh, that's so funny oh it's so terrible he's a degenerate um Yes, and you fin boy as you may. Um, however, uh, he he is a good actor. As I don't know, Jim Carrey is a good actor, but uh, he also have a lot of sway and, and influence over the production of this movie. So the movie itself was presenting China in this very unique, superior sense. Like, oh, none of you Western country can achieve what we Chinese. Are able to do because you cannot put down some uh, uh, minor sacrifice of uh, um, ethics or moral. Oh, we Chinese are so much better than you because we can actually band together and then do these things. Um, and I think it just kind of speaks uh, for itself when it comes to uh, the reactionary and um, overtly propagandistic nature of this movie yeah i certainly wouldn't disagree i mean i i don't know anything about it personally but i know like the the one that my mind always goes to is um the mulan remake where you have oh right you you have movies that are either from or cater to like a a very specific revitalized kind of chinese nationalism that okay. seemed really obvious with uh, fun fact uh my girlfriends cannot cry without Cannot watch the original Mulan without crying because you know the uh, the the you know the the song is too sentimental for for trans girls. It's a good movie. Who is that girl? Right. It is a really good movie. It was banger songs. I can sing every one of them. But <clears throat> and you know, um, uh, despite being having scenes like Chinese people eating dumplings with rice, which you know, obvious. This is like someone put. Pizza, put bread on top of pizza. Ah, <laughs> uh, um, and you know, the post of the movie, I would say, is um, kind of orientalist in his own right and kind of racist. Like how Aladdin is really racist. Mm -hmm. Hakim, if I have to say, Hakim have one good take. Is he is his analogy on Aladdin? I think people should watch it. His analysis on. Um, Aladdin is actually a really good banger. People should watch it. But uh, yeah, the the new Mulan movie, gosh, it's so bad. Uh, it's not only just bad because you know they shoot it close to a concentration camp, but also yeah, it's just it's the re whole whole representation is so so off. Yeah, and it was certainly not as good as the original. So it w oh, specifically, because yeah. I haven't seen it myself. Um, with regards to the uh, the three body, you know, and and the the movies that have come out, which have apparently been received <clears throat> pretty well. I mean, they're popular, if nothing else. Like, ha to what extent is this being um, directed? You know, like like how heavy handed is the CCP being in in sort of like managing its cultural export? I mean, is it known? It's is that like to, a widely... It's hard to say. Okay. Uh, however, the tone itself kind of say for its, you know, um, because Wu Jing, again, the producer, who's also the main uh, actor, he is, oh, uh, the three body, uh, the, the book, or you mean the, the Wandering Earth movie? Oh, the movie. Sorry, the movies. The movie. Well, I saw it. Yeah, because I, yeah, I don't think we're going to talk about the, the book. It, it, but the, the, the Wandering Earth, which is a separate, based on a separate uh, book that is written the same way. Wu Jing, who is also a producer and a main actor, he, the reason why he became famous, again, I think I said earlier, was because the movie series, The Wolf Warrior, it, it is the same term that the Chinese diplomats have uh, employed for its own tactic 
right? The, the wolf warrior tactic of the a diplomat, which means over aggressive, sort of almost a chauvinistic tone uh, when they are talking to foreign adversaries. Mm-hmm. It is uh, Wu Jing actually pushed a lot of uh, ch- internal media that is directly, overtly nationalist. When he got involved in any type of uh, movie later uh, in his later career, it all become extremely uh, nationalistic in nature. Um, so I'm not sure how much the Chinese state uh, have strong involvement, but again, every single cultural product in China is created under the surveillance and the consent of the state. With this much money, the state is definitely involved, but I don't think it's directly controlled. There's a lot of way to overtly uh, pushing uh, uh, narratives, stories, and uh, 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 great, uh, an apparatuses to, to manufacturing a, a manufacturing cassette, right? So, there, yeah, there's no getting away from it. No, I don't think so. Um, however, I do suggest people to watch the movie uh, not to 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 uh, learn something from it, but just to, well, yeah, learn something from it. But but to see how is modern China perceived through China's Chinese uh, uh, media that is produced by Chinese people. I think it is very important that we learn. It's kind of like how what is the best ways to learn American, uh, how American perceive uh, their own country, uh, if not from a lot of Hollywood movies. Right by Hollywood exports American uh, American chauvinism and American imperialism. Right, like Marvel, for example. Right, so I think it is we have a lot of valuable lesson we can learn uh, by watching these things, not in a positive way, but but just as as a um, as a as a scene or um, see it almost like a, a presentation. Yes. Gotcha. Okay, so. Um... Hopefully the person who, um, who asked me to ask you that appreciates that what I assume is far more of an answer Thank than, um, oh, than they one expected. One more thing about the movie. Even more of an answer the than they expected. Doubling up. Hell yeah, bring it in. Sorry, just one thing. I believe, I need to look it up right now, is Xi Jinping's nephew involved in the movie. Because Xi Jinping's nephew is an actor. And in order to, to a lot of movie, in order to, to, to uh, make sure it will release in Chinese market, they, they basically insert them in. It's like a, like a life-saving ticket, almost. Let me uh-huh. look up. Um, Xi Jinping. One second. Jinping. Jinping. And let's see. What is his name? Uh, is this guy? I don't think it's this is this is it. No, no, no. Shoot. Um, sorry, it. You don't need to apologize. Oh, there he is. Let me see. Is he in? Uh, my bad. I don't think he is in. Involved in here. No, I don't think he is in this movie. But um, yeah, no. So sometimes, for in order for a movie that is uh, could possibly tread the red line, they would just get him on and then let him play a role because he is the nephew of Xi Jinping. It's a lot easier for him to 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 get things passed. He must uh, be for example, terrifying to yeah. work with. Uh, not really. I heard he's he's fine. He's kind of like a chill dude, uh, even though his uh, uncle's. <laughs> the Emperor of China. Uh, uh, oh, by the way, one movie he was involved is absolutely um, necessary for many people to understand modern Chinese history and, and, and just how Chinese Maoists, not, I'm not kidding, perceive Chinese modern history is uh, Let Bullet Fly. It's directed by Jiang Wen. So the guy who showed up in uh, the, the Star Wars movie, uh, you wrote one, the Chinese guy who worked with uh, uh, Tony Yan. Oh. Uh, the guy with a big gun. He is named Jiang Wen, one of the most prominent Maoists. Yes, he is a Maoist in Chinese movie. And he's one of the most famous Chinese director too. Uh, he, he's a huge name in China. And uh, one of his best movie is called Let Bullet Fly. It's a very Chinese film. Uh, it's, it can be a little hard to understand, but, but I highly suggest people to watch it. You can learn a lot about modern China 
from oh. watching it. Thank you for the recommendation. I'm 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 You're honored that a Maoist would deign to um be a part of a Western uh, production. That's very nice of them. In fact, he even wanted to reject it in the beginning. He's like, ah, oh, screw you, Disney. I do not want to work with you. But his sons, his two sons, like, Dad, it's, it's Star Wars. You got to work for Disney. It's, you got to show up in Star Wars. We got to tell all the kids, my dad is a character in Star Wars. And I'm like, fine, I'll do it. Yeah, he's a funny dude. He's a, he is a quite interesting dude. He's a very interesting record. The a very good of, director, too. Uh, many a... Um... Of uh, uh, many a principled position, the uh, the kids being oh, yeah. annoying. So, yeah, um, um, hmm? okay, well, shit. Okay, I'll I'll make a note of that recommendation. I'm trying to watch more movies right now, as it is. So, you said there were other things you wanted to talk about, which is great because, as it happens, there were other things that I wanted to hear about. Um, what did you have in mind? All right, the first thing I want to talk about is finishing something I mentioned that you asked me, but I forgot to talk go through with you is how Chinese government or Chinese media portray Great December mm -hmm. and climate activists. Uh, remember he told me, they, could they, do they see them as uh, national traitors? The traitor accusation only goes to Chinese climate activists. There are Chinese um, students who supported Greta doing like a little protest, taking a picture of them uh, doing a protest and uh, not going to school for a day. But her, her portrayal in China is uh, shifting between she is the part of the global George Soros liberal cabal. Mm -hmm. Of course. Uh, to stop China from in further industrializing themselves over in order for China to achieve the great rejuvenation of the Chinese nation. Uh, maybe not necessarily going to say Soros, but it's, you know, down the rabbit hole, they're going to call it whatever. They're going to call it the PC cabal. They're going to call it the liberal cabal. In fact, fun, fun fact. You know how your American left uh, right winger use woke instead of PC now? Yeah. Chinese online discourse regarding the, although they regurgitate a lot of right wing talking point, the usage of term, how they coined the term kind of stilted uh, in 2016. They will call everything they don't like PC. The, in China, in Chinese, they call it 政治正确, uh, and they will write it as ZZZQ because that's the Chinese pinyin uh, synonym. And uh, the newest example, I would say, is in the live action One Piece. You know, Usopp is played by a black actor, and then there's two, there's, a, they, they, I think they officially announced that Kobe is trans as well as a crocodile, which is awesome. That Wait, is awesome. Kobe and, and Crocodile mm -hmm. are both trans? Uh, Kobe is portrayed by a trans actor. Oh, really? A crocodile showed up as a woman, a pre-transition crocodile, because she first showed up at uh, uh, Gold, Goldie Rogers' uh, execution. Yeah. And she showed up as a woman. Oh. He, huh. he showed up as a woman. I did not mean to misgender crocodile. You, you, you are completely fine. I didn't know that. I'm Shit, maybe I, maybe I will watch the live action. Remember, crocodile, oh, I hope I'm not going to... Spoiled anything from uh, the, the chatter who haven't watched? Oh, uh, don't no no! You're but, you're spoiling the first like zero point one percent of a of oh. a long running series. This is their fault. It's on them at this point. <laughs> Indeed, who who hasn't watched One Piece at this point? Oh gosh, um, it's, it's on you, chatter. Um, jokes on you. Um, anyway, where was I? Ah, oh, yes, yeah, they they got mad at uh at, at, at One Piece, and uh, of course, can you imagine Chinese people's reaction? towards the little mermaid remake <laughs> holy crap oh um they were they were furious at uh hella belly uh, because you know they don't know her music i don't like most of uh modern disney uh remake because i know it's a corporate product only used to make slobs and make money right uh, and I do not like her acting. She's not a very good actor. However, I recognize her talent and I wish her a good career. You know, I really do not like the uh, Little Mermaid. Um, if Disney truly have the balls, at least would actually find a good drag queen to cast as Ursula. Can we imagine how much would it be a bop? We have a real drag queen Ursula? Like doing the body language, right? Oh my God. You know with our luck that um, they would have just gotten like, I don't know, the most conservative RuPaul adjacent drag queen they could. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I completely agree. Um, 
<laughs> yeah. Oh gosh. Um, but yeah. Um, oh, so yeah. So in China, yeah. Uh, if you look up uh, Greta, they don't call her Greta because uh, her name is harder to pronounce and type out. I think. But in China, they just call her the young girl who want to do environmentalism. It's called Huan Bao Shao Nu. It is it's gonna be a little hard to translate uh, into English. And if you look her up, um, do you want me to show you the search result of if you look her up in China? Sure. How do I spell? It's in Chinese, so you're gonna have a hard time. Okay, then I can't uh, do it. I'm not even gonna it, try. I, I can I can show you a screenshot. I can just give you a, a sure. Page go right ahead. And Okay, I hope this is not going to help Chinese government to track me down. Oh, yeah, well, um, be careful. Yeah, um... Okay, let's see. Oh, yeah, G-Jack. Oh, gosh, G-Jack, you stupid old swine. Uh, because G-Jack have a very cringe take when it comes to Greta. Um, I mean, I'm just a little worried. Uh, I'm not sure would this be a good idea. I, okay. Let's uh, wish my luck, guys. Hopefully, Chinese government not gonna track me down using this. No! All right, you click it open, you can see, see the thumbnail. And you... Well, I already did, Wash. It's already in the chat. God damn it. You're gonna go dark on Maybe. me. Oh, can you... Maybe, I don't know, can you delete it on your end? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, okay, delete it on your end. I would just send it down. Oh down my Discord. god. <laughs> Dude, it's the same. You see, like, is is universally it's how the, the same. How, yeah, it's always like, oh, how dare you? Like, it's like how um, the um, uh, American far right portrays her, and this is the only voice you have in China. You does not, yeah, does you do not <clears throat> have any opposition, left opposition in the uh, to combat this narrative does not exist. This is why it's really scary because. In the West, at least you have a bunch of, you know, useless lefty. However, <laughs> in China, there is no environmentalist. There is no Baizuo to combat outright, oh God, uh, to, to combat uh, uh, outright talking points. Oh, and one more thing, funny thing. You know how uh, Tenki would like to use the term Baizuo? Baizuo means white left or white leftist. Yes. Yeah. This is a term actually uh, created by a person called Li Shuo. He is a far-right Manchuria independent movement leader. Well, not necessarily a leader because no one actually listened to him. Um, but he was a kind of an internet meme. Uh, it's really funny how Tenki adapt a far-right Chinese person who currently live in New York. Well, the joke is that he lives in New York, Chinatown it's, now, it's but un we don't really know where he is. Such an incredible endorsement of the concept of um, globalism and multiculturalism that you go over to China. It's like, hmm, I wonder what they have to say about these issues. And it's just a bunch of people screaming like, Cuck white boy, soy ass, cuck woke, beta, manlet. It's like, ah, it's like, I'm home everywhere. Everywhere on earth is my home, <laughs> you know? And uh, one more thing, Wash. If you go on this website and search you, oh, the no. only two uh, videos going to be is the video of you critiquing G-Reg and your debate with Huzz. <laughs> really? And your video of debating Huzz was uploaded by a Chinese nationalist who works for Huzz. He has a Twitter account where he worshiped Genghis Khan. <laughs> okay, that's actually funny as <laughs> It is funny. Uh, the reason is because this person who worked for Huzz is, uh, he belonged in a Chinese faction of far-right fascists who call themselves the Wu Guanren, as in the people who enter the gate. It is an analogy about, uh, that is referring to the historical event of the Manchus who blow up part of, um, uh, well, they didn't blow up part of uh, a Great Wall, but they entered the Great Wall through a gate and it's called Enter the Gate, that the, the act of entering the, uh, pass through the Great Wall. And so the analogy is that Chinese, Chinese far right uh, movement are like the barbarian who conquered the civilized but soy beta America. So the, the far right Chinese can live in big houses, eat steak and f white woman. This guy <laughs> works for us. That's per, I, again, I'm home. 
Oh, the the best part though is okay because like all of the lunatic far right dudes over here in America are white boy incels. But I imagine that over in China, they've got to be even more incel, right? Like, like they're ha the the relationship between oh, no. being unfuckable and being like a far right, like Han oh, revivalist no. Chinese nationalist. We will make Genghis Khan look like a look Mother Teresa type. That has to be a strong correlation, right? Uh, like Walsh, you have no idea what it's like to be a Chinese leftist on Chinese internet. You're just doing your going through your day watching funny video. Uh, and then you go into the comment section to see what people's reaction. Regular stuff, regular stuff, regular stuff. Some guy all of a sudden start talking about political correctness. Is uh, the West has fallen? It's all over. Million must die. Is the Jews? Is the the white liberals? I'm like, what? Uh, you watch like a funny um, video about what. One Piece. Oh, One Piece, the newest chapter, wonderful. It's like, oh, I hope they wouldn't cast uh, a character as trans when they uh, make a live, a live adaptation about this. Like, oh, gosh, why did I, why, 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 my people? Uh, all 4,000 years of history and culture. Yeah, oh, and, and, and like it's this. actually despair-inducing to think about. Like, I don't put that much stock oh, yes. in the longevity of culture, but to imagine, like, literally the oldest ongoing state. The, like, and kind of, right? You've had a bunch of revolutions. But, like, basically, like, the longevity of Chinese culture, and then you have the Cultural Revolution, and then the Chinese government undoes the Cultural Revolution, and now, like, because of the internet and globalization, you, you, you go to, like, the Forbidden City, and you open up your phone, and within, like, two seconds on your, like, Chinese state government-approved Twitter feed, there's some guy talking about how Jews are bringing down the Orient or something, and there's, like, five Jewish yeah. people in all of China. Jesus Christ! Oh, it's actually, so fucked. luckily. Luckily, most, uh, when we talk about, like, Jewish anti-Semitic talking point, you wouldn't find that much Chinese people talking about Jewish all the time. If they want to have, like, a term, they want to coin the person who's, or the group of people who are responsible for this, I joke you not, they're gonna say it's the Andrew Saxons. Really? Yes, the Andrew Saxons. One of the key and indicator of whether or not this Chinese is a crazy far-right nationalist is they're gonna use the term Andrew Saxons and in a very unique way. They will take the first two characters of the Andrew Saxons. Nah, you're looking at chat. And they call it Ansa. Um, or, or, yeah, or USA. Yeah, I think it's um, Ansa. Um, and yeah, no joke. Uh, Andrew Saxons. I'm, I'm so sorry. I have, I have no respect to the Brits, okay? I'm gonna, hey. I'm gonna what, call them whatever. The, the pronunciation. Yeah, I mean. it's yeah, it's Adrian Saxons, uh, actually. Adrian Saxons. That's, oh, it's, it's so, like, well, unironically, though, like, Anglo-Saxons barely even exist anymore. Like, the, the, the specific ethnic group at this point has been diluted with, like, the Normans and, like, the, like, it's, that, it's just so weird. Yeah, it's like, it, it's like an unironic version of, um, of, of, like, believing in the Hibernian conspiracy theory or something. Yes, indeed, right? Um, but well, that's that's what it is. Um, and it's quite fascinating to see how Chinese internet culture evolved into what we have today. Um, uh, so because I grew up in China, I got to see how the internet degrade. And through this, I want to talk about one really important thing, uh, because our time is quite limited today. Mm -hmm. or, you know, I, let's see how many things we can go through today. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're, we're going to be powerful things. and efficient, I believe in us. Wonderful. One of the things I really want to talk about is, remember the Chinese government controlling the discourse? Uh, this is how Chinese government... I mean, obviously, I also don't have a uh, document to, to, to show you the evidence of how Chinese government coordinated this. But from my perspective, this is what I see. So remember I told you <clears throat> the Eastern uh, Turkish state movement committed, had a, a terrorist attack in China and that murdered uh, many Chinese civilians. Obviously, it was a horrible uh, action that they committed and the, innocent people was killed and after that happened uh because there's already a sentiment in china it's like oh wow we got a terrorist attack from uh, extremist muslim um organizations chinese government immediately starting to utilize 
this sentiment, but they utilize it in a very unique way. Remember I told you there was a witch hunt movement against scientific uh, media account? Yes. Um, yeah, yeah, they closed it Oh, down. and actually, before I talk about this, I want to talk about one thing just in case, like, a tanky decided to, uh, like, club check me or try to use this to discredit me. Uh, if you look up Guoke, it is still an existing organization. The one that was this bandit was the scientific squirrel however guoke as a website was only a former pat like a former self of his past glory it's the website stopped the forum is closed the website stopped updating itself for a long time it only exists like a very small independent media residing on one of the chinese social media weixin um and yeah okay I'll get back to that. So just in case someone's like, oh, wait, no, this guy's lying. Like, well, Guoke wasn't this man. Look, he, they have this tiny little channel uh, on Weixin. So uh, you're lying or something. Uh, anyway. So starting from 2012, 2013, racist Hanchu always exist. Chinese nationalists, you can always find them on Chinese internet. They're going to talk about how much they hate other uh, as the minorities, but previous to this um, move, of the wave of anti-Islam, uh, Islamic phobic uh, narrative, before it started, the perception of Uyghurs are more similar to how Europeans see uh, the Romani people. They are thieves, that they couldn't integrate into the greater society of China, that they are... Um, Sort of uh, bad actors. Uh, they, 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 this, this sort of classless notion, and also again, it is racist. But it was not uh, like, oh, we should put them into re-education camp. Mm -hmm. uh, it's more like, yeah, it's more how Europeans see Romani people. Uh, not direct genocide, but it was uh, trying to like, yeah, we should either keep them away from the greater society, or they should try their best to become Chinese, because. They never was Chinese in the first place. However, during this massive internet movement that over the, during the, over the years, uh, after the terrorist, a terrorist attack occurred, there was a, a strong effort from a Chinese government part to push for narrative that directly form a Islamic phobic narrative that help China to create system that's similar to uh, Patriot Act. Mm -hmm. And it existed in a very unique way. It was created through memes. Um, so Chinese people created, like Chinese nationalists who uh, are Islamic phobic, created all these very, like, basically Chinese Wojak. Have you guys ever seen Chinese, like, panda people, panda face? Yes, yes, yes. Yes. It was like that, but make fun of Muslim, like, oh, this is not halal. I'm gonna, uh, you guys don't know what real halal is. Like a, it's like a really weird looking Muslim man, big Muslim man saying, you guys don't know what real halal is. And I will destroy your restaurant if you don't cook me real halal food. And then next page, next picture is, next meme is him uh, lifting up his clothes and it's bomb tied to his chest. Like, I will show you what real halal is. It's, you know, indication like, oh, the real Muslim are the terrorist Muslim. And, Chinese government have the ability to remove um, things that they deem offensive. Like Chinese government on paper have the ability to remove memes like this. But instead, they will actually, yes, like that, but it's like anti Semitic. Uh, yeah, I'm, um, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not, I didn't search uh, Chinese panda wojak hate crime Muslim hate Islamophobe. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll stick to these. Uh, let me let me just. I'm sure I can find some for you on Google Google Map. Oh, uh, Google, uh, not Google Map. That means uh, Google um, picture. There you go. All right. Let uh, me show you. Uh, I will quickly. send it on Discord. Gotcha. Uh, that quickly, you're you're a, a, a seasoned warrior of finding uh, hate speech. Oh my gosh! There's, why there's so many Chinese capitalists on there? Oh well. Um, yeah. That. But that, the first few are that. yeah are a good example of that. Um, and literally the first page. The, oh my gosh! Uh, let, let, if you can, if you can find it. Ah, yes. Click on the 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 picture on the top left. This is a uh, left on the left. Oh, more, one more. Yep. Yeah. This is a 
question posted on Chinese Quora, equivalent of Chinese Quora, like people ask questions and the people answer. And the title of the question is, what will be the end result of political correctness? It's the same. It's the same everywhere. Jesus Christ. And it's about, and it's, uh, the question is about a German Muslim uh, girl was uh, granted honor or something because she created an emoji that includes like their clothes. And then Chinese people are like, oh, well, we created our uh, special emoji too. Um, uh, yeah, it's, it's like that. And Chinese government will selectively sometime ban the questions or delete their, um, their, their answer or really overtly racist stuff. I genuinely don't think out of the goodness of their heart or actually anti-racism. It's just basically stir up the flame. You're like making Chinese people somehow also think that by being racist, they are fighting against the system that is somehow racist towards the Han majority. And when Muslim are actually ended up in concentration camp, they deserve it because now they have touched the red line and then they got what they deserve. Um, that's how I see it. Of course, obviously, I don't, I cannot provide you any real evidence, but I definitely have. Oh, and one more evidence thing, funny thing, not well, it's kind of like a really hellish joke. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like a joke that is really just kind of bad. It's like I'm laughing at something that is terrible. Um, or I, we, we shouldn't really. I should just give you the story. Um, before this maybe got picked up by Western media, I'm not 100% certain about this, but in China, there are human resource websites, the places that people can post about, oh, I have, you know, I know a guy who wants to work in this industry. If there's any company want to hire him, he's like an electrician, this is his resume. And on some of these websites, after the concentration camp was built, you can find people saying, oh, uh, I have this group of 20 folks, 20 good old Muslim uh, from the Xinjiang region, and uh, they, wouldn't, they would want minimal pay. They would not uh, fight back if you beat them, okay? They would be very easy to talk to, uh, just as if someone break their morale and their mind. Uh, and uh, uh, if you want to uh, use them in your company for any kind of purposes, uh, you can send me an email. I don't think you can find that today. Maybe you still can. But I think that's pretty telling for... for yeah, me. I'd certainly also, fucking say so. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think, it's, I think it's interesting too because um, after 9-11, after you know, we had our whole war on terror bent with um, Muslims. But I think the attitude was a little bit less eliminationist with American Muslims, yeah. at least in that way. Like, uh, uh, the, the overriding thing, I think, from a lot of Americans was, like, paranoia and fear and, and reflexive hatred. But the, like, um, they, like, they are second-class citizens, they are dogs kind of thing never felt like it was very um, well, formally boss, laid out. Uh, yeah, because they are immigrants. Where the one, the, the, the case about Xinjiang people, uh, Uyghur people in Xinjiang, is that they are colonized, right? Exactly. So yeah, yeah, yeah. How exactly. America treated uh, people in the Middle East. America government didn't care about pe brown people in the Middle East. They bombed the shit out of them. It's a similar type of uh, perspective, I would say. Uh, again, sorry to say this, but America doesn't have a clean record on how to treat Muslim people. Is that true? Um, I'm just hearing this. Um... <laughs> <laughs> no, it's. It, I guess it's. It's interesting to me how much the dynamic changes with the um, with the perception of Muslims as the other, as opposed to them being the other, but also like an internal threat. Like m you, you're right. It is the difference between a group being colonized and them being considered immigrants. Every Muslim in America is considered to be basically like an outsider who came here, but you can't do that with um with Uyghur Muslims, because they're in the Xinjiang province and have been for a long time. So with them, like, there has to be a different narrative. It has to be more um, overtly, like, eliminationist or overtly controlling. It can't just be like, oh, we don't want to deal with these people, because that's what they could have pretended to say about American Muslims, you know? And I think this could also be a good segue into one thing I want to talk about. Uh... <sighs> I, I, I know this, like, again, I'm beating a dead horse again, providing again and again about, like, how, how, China, how bad China is. Uh, but I want to once say one more thing when it comes to Chinese uh, xenophobic, not xenophobic, yeah, 
xenophobic is that the right term it is like afraid of immigrants. yeah um xenophobia yeah, yeah. Chinese people, uh, obviously, is really, really racist against black people. Uh, not all Chinese people, but a lot of uh, modern young Chinese people. Um, and I think one of the good example uh, is... Um, so when Chinese government actually formally import Western media, you know, when they say the N-word, there is an official translation of that slur. The Chinese directly translate do something that means like the black demon. Don't ever use that term. It's terrible, obviously. But Chinese racists, I don't know, because they're really, really racist, they translate that word instead of translating that, using the official translation, they use the sound translation. So they write the N-word in Chinese pronunciation. They find Chinese character that sounds the most like the N-word to say the slur. In a way, it is a exportation exploitation uh yeah exportation of american racism to china that's so fucking weird that's yeah, so I mean, strange it is i think it is just a byproduct of uh, importing right uh, uh, american far right talking points i'm not saying that uh, like systematically there's a difference between how chinese government and chinese society treats black people and how america treats black people because, you know, there's a significant different history there as a background. But the way Chinese public treat chi black, treats black people, black visitors or uh, people who studied in, in China, more of a, like a xenophobia. This is where the Chinese Great Replacement Theory comes in. Uh, a lot of Chinese Han, especially Yin Sel men, have a really strong fear of towards black men. Because just like racist white supremacists have strong... You know, um, not satisfaction, but they have a not strong urge. Uh, they really, they can't stop thinking about the concept of the black cock, cockholdry of white people. Exactly, where Chinese Han themselves have the same problem, <laughs> especially with the stereotype of Asian small penis. Oh, it's it's even worse we're, here. We're, oh. all, we're all the same. Ironically, in their desire to separate us, the racists have proven that we are all literally exactly the same. It's the same yes. everywhere. Wow. It's the same yeah, shit. Obsession, yeah, obsession of black penis. Yeah, the obsession of a a hyper masculized, otherized black body that exists in America and China, which really sucks for black people live in China, which includes. Obama's brother, Obama's younger brother from the same father, currently he, resides in China. He lives in China? Is, is that true? He lives in China. Yes, oh. he lives in China. I didn't know and that. And he does not like his brother. <laughs> yeah, well, no, he's, he's a f lunatic, he is. Um, yeah, he's, yeah, no, no. I didn't know that, huh? Mm -hmm. I guess he has to live somewhere. Um, yes. Yeah, I, I, guess I'm, I, I guess I'm kind of surprised, but not really, at the idea of the racist, fetishistic dynamic being replicated to a T. It's just so weird. It's just so f strange to think about, but I guess like I, it, it I, man, this really is like America winning the cultural victory, huh? Your average yes. person in China is never going to meet a black guy. I'm totally stereotyping. I don't know if what I just said is true, but I think it is in that You can true. find more uh black immigrants in uh, Kenton. And that's where a lot of racism towards black people stem from. But like the, I, I feel like, because in America, unless you're like in a very, very specific part of the country, <clears throat> you're going to meet black people. It's just the idea of being obsessive over a racial group you've never, like, it would be like Americans, freak, like American far right types freaking out and doing cuckold fantasies about Uyghur Muslims. Like, you, have you met a Uyghur Muslim? <laughs> you know, is no. that like... Yes. The, the, the largest uh, equivalent of Chinese subreddit, that is the, like the homeland of Chinese racism against black people, is literally called um, the subreddit, uh, like r slash Guangzhou uh, Hated, black people in Canton. That's literally like the, the center of Chinese anti-black racism. Like they, they're so obsessed over black immigrants in Canton. That's like the biggest community of racists. It's, it's, it's absurdly interesting. It, it, it is, it is interesting. Yeah, it's, 
I like obviously it's horrible, but I guess I don't know. I I guess there's just something very funny about the idea of a bunch of far right Chinese incels freaking out over black guys when they're never going to meet a black guy, you know, in the in the lives. Um, However, I want to say one thing that's please. kind of sad though. You know how Andrew Tate and Sneeko are kind of being bullied on the internet, except for like twelve year old boy who hopefully will eventually grow out of it and I don't know find a beautiful trans girlfriend like me. Um, Chinese young man, or just Chinese people in general, is not gonna grow out of this. Like, you know, I have go to you know I go to uh, university in in America and chatter. If you're currently in uh, reside in uh, UC system or in many top school or even in not so good school, um, you're gonna meet Chinese international international student. Uh, how many of, chatter? Uh, hyper or say yes uh, if you have met Chinese international students. Well, I I certainly have many. You know, I grew up next to UCLA. They're everywhere right? there. Chatters in the future. If you ever run into a Chinese international student in your class or in your community, talk to them. Try to engage with them. You know, usually their English sucks because they don't bother to learn English. If you're not in like a really top school and they don't give a shit about their grade. But if you are in a decent school, you met a Chinese student who bothered to study English, and you ask them about their politics, especially for men, you're gonna get some wacky result, especially the rich one. Like I had a Chinese roommate who was the son of a powerful bureaucrat in China, uh, and for, that was very unfortunate. I thought I can maybe had some engaging in some <sighs> in depth political analysis of China. He bust out 20 slur in one conversation the second day I met him. Go completely mask off. And I'm like, how do you respond to that? I'm just like, what? Why, are you, why do you hate black people so much? What did they do to you? I said, nothing. But they're going to try to take over Canton. Like, oh my <laughs> god. You are literally, you will never meet a black person except some, like, dip diplomat in your life because your, your family is too powerful to ever think about having black people to compete with you. you it, and also, of course, he, he treat women like... Oh, oh, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah, obviously. And uh, you can look, even look this up. When during Hong Kong protests, there was huge amount of Chinese international, international students harassing, bullying, straight up just doing terrible thing to Hong Kongese students uh, who support their protest. And there were a huge amount of really wealthy Chinese international students jump into the fancy sports car their mommy and daddy bought for them. And they drive on the street, beep as loud as they can to show off how powerful China is. To show off how powerful their, their mommy and their daddy and their daddy and their mommy. It's, it's a good, better call. So it's a, a Breaking Bad reference from So Good Man. But, um, and like, I, I can't fathom, other than have actual brain rot, can a tanky look at things like this happening and say, China is a socialist country that respects worker. Like, dude, you literally see dozens of extremely wealthy children of oligarchs in their fancy sports car, marching on the street in their sports car about how much they hate democracy and support police brutality. This, there's no way you can get away with this other than you just close your eyes and then say, oh, uh, uh, China, everything about what you're saying is live from CNN and CIA, uh, you know. And come to think of it, I'm, I mean, not, this may not be a good idea, but... I always have this, Rosh, do you, what, do you remember you have this joke about we should take all the tankies and send them to North Korea? J yeah, that joke. Um, yeah. However, sure. no, it's not about that. I want to genuinely ask fellow American MLs to rethink your position. You know, and the only <clears throat> problem that... I see in here that this analogy or this uh, circumstance is many white expat. If you look at a lot of tanky who went to China, their experience is great. And that is because they are white. This is the funny thing. 
tanky, especially white western tankies positionality, why they have such a better life and why they can pick and choose which Chinese person to listen to is because that they, their privilege built upon white supremacy and neoliberalism. When they go to China, their white supremacist white privilege, it's still there. White people are loved by Chinese, Chinese people love white people. Like if you are white, you get free drinks in the bar, people are gonna be really friendly towards you because white to most colonized uh, 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 places represents um, wealth, represents power, represents knowledge, represents modernity. And their look, their, 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 your aesthetic, your, your aesthetic is sort of propped by American uh, popular media, right? Like, if you are a white guy, naturally is going to be perceived as more uh, uh, um, uh, uh, better looking, more attractive to a lot of people. If you are a white woman, white guy, it doesn't matter which gender you, you are, you will be received with friendly faces. In yeah, China, I, just in stage in general, not just China. I saw this recently with, with somebody saying that, like, even though China has been, like, pretty openly attacking queer people and femboys and crap lately, um, that they were queer and they went over yes. to China. It was the stupidest experience. thing I've ever seen. Yeah, because it's like... Especially when the trans... Yeah, the trans... It was a trans woman who was like, oh, look at me. I have this prescription from a Western uh, doctor uh, and I can grab th uh, uh, HRT. Do you know how hard it is for a trans person in China to get that? That the privilege... How even dare they dare to say that line without to even consider yeah. that they own, resemble their own privilege? Well, it's, it's, it's like... Baffling it's like, to me. It's like being a white Westerner and going over to, like, Hawaii. Or, or going over to, like, Saudi Arabia and being like, yes. hey, people say Saudi Arabia is, like, super brutal or whatever, but I went over to their capital and I went over to, like, a nice hotel and I had a great time and everyone was super happy and friendly. And, like, it's... But it's, it's, it's genuinely astonishing that that level of self-awareness um is is being displayed by people who call themselves communists you know it's it's this, like yeah shocking this is why i mentioned about the the thing you said because i feel like even if we actually take them to north korea all they get is gonna have like a propaganda tour and they're gonna come back to america and talk about how good north korea is and in fact north korea does exactly that we are, my family have been to north korea I went to North Korea when I was a child. North Korea is not, not a, it's, it, it's, it's not that good. It's not a socialist uh, or anything resembles a, a, um, like a prosperous nation state, like many tanky would, uh, make you believe. Like American propaganda, in fact, is kind of accurate. Like they would have, they have casino. So the, in, in capital of Pyongyang, uh, if you are a visitor, regardless of nationality, you have to stay in one hotel. Uh, the hotel they made for these Western, uh, not Western, foreign visitors. And you have to stay there. All of your, um, all of your tour are directly guided, uh, are led, led by a guide who's also, you know, going to be the government agent, uh, agent who basically makes sure you don't go to weird places. And there's cameras everywhere. But inside the hotel, there is a um casino you can you can use dollar and rnb to basically play cards there and the government take money from that and there's literally state-run sex worker like for rich westerner and chinese and north korean bureaucrats north korea is it, it's leak it, it, it's not great like if tanky wants you to believe something is like the north korea is good just look at how chinese media portray north korea the way Chinese media portray North Korea is not that uh, dissimilar from Western media depic depiction of North Korea. And from my own eye, it's it's pretty freaking um, 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 accurate. Yeah, they I... even check your camera before you leave the country. That that's if if anyone want to know uh, what you know, North Korea is like, you know, they literally will check your camera before you leave their country. Yeah, I think, I mean, this is one of the things where, like, you know, you don't, the West doesn't really have to lie to make North Korea look bad. I think the, 
the problem is that a lot of lefties um, have adopted the same attitude towards the crimes of these countries that a lot of right wingers have when it comes to basically everything. Where it's right wingers caught on to the fact that media lie sometimes. And as a consequence of that, now anytime the media says anything they don't like, they can be like, ah, oh, well, this is fake, actually. It doesn't matter what the evidence is. This is fake now. Um, and likewise, with, with like, you know, China or North Korea or Vietnam or whatever, like, because Western media has lied and does lie, therefore, necessarily, any negative information about those countries, whether it comes from me or from you, it's, it's all deep state shit, you know? Yeah, I'm, I'm totally a CIA agent. Um, CIA Asian dino. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a dinosaur human. I, literally, a half dinosaur, half human uh, amalgamation created by CIA in a lab. I'm right now typing using my big reptilian uh, bird uh, claws with feather on my arm. Um, yeah, I, and I, uh, I have sharp teeth. I eat raw meat. Ah, yeah, gosh. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> uh. Oh. Um. Mm -hmm. Oh no. I um. Uh, huh? yep. We're we're a bit over, but I have I have a bit more in me. I think. Um. Okay. Was there anything else uh, that you had I, in mind to talk about? Yes. Yes. Two more thing. I'm, I will try to make this as quick as possible. Um. Okay. So, uh, one of the next thing we're going to talk about is how China uh plays itself as the Orient. Funny thing. Uh, the way China. Uh, well, not necessarily place itself as the Orient, but how it perceive uh, Xinjiang and Tibet, uh, the East Turkestan and Tibet. Uh, to China, the uh, uh, the way they look at they look at uh, Xinjiang, Tibet are kind of like how the West look at the Orient, like traditionally Orientalism. Xinjiang and Tibet are seen as this uh, uncivilized, un pre-industrialized block of harmonical culture that uh, that can be that can be um, exploited it and it Tibetan Buddhism and Tibetan culture are viewed in a similar tone as how Western world view uh, uh, China in 1900s the Orient's Orient I call it mm -hmm. it is fascinating how China sort of turn this uh, Western narrative and gaze to their own subjected people, uh, uh, you know, through their um, narrative and subjugation, uh, for to these ethnic minorities. Um, and another thing is, um, uh, we don't have enough time, so I'm not going to give that much example other than uh, we'll just type the name of the guy. You might just look it up. Uh, he was a young Tibetan that was heavily sexualized by Chinese internet and fetishized by um like kind of officially by chinese uh, uh, official uh, uh media like state literal state media another thing is um uh sort of how china uh, trying to like from the last conversation asking this question china is china a this form this block is china a united sort of cultural block well it's absolutely not however the cpc wants you to feel that way Ever since the 1900, where the Western uh, modern movement started to reach China, one of the guy called Liang Qichao, he was a very famous scholar in the Republic of China time. He created this uh, conflict, this almost dialectic between the East and the West, position China from to the unique Westerness. This is why to, to today, we Chinese people perceive modernization as Westernization. I mean, a lot of countries do this. Um, but uh, uh, China, it, put itself in a very unique, a more unique position, because it's literally the definition, uh, sometimes, for the Orient, right? And it, it wants to create this unified Han uh, or Chinese identity that is kind of a jambalaya of many different things mixed up. So for within Chinese language, we don't just call ourselves Chinese. There's a lot of term to, to differentiate a different type of Chinese people. Like, for example, if I am born in China, moved to America, I will be called a Hua Ren. If I'm born in America, second generation, I call myself Hua Yi. But in English, they're all called Chinese. Or Chinese people in China, Chinese. Chinese Han, Chinese. It's the same damn term, but the Chinese government love that shit. Because to them, a united concept of China that you directly equivalent to CPC, 
narratively help them so much. If America can't stop um, this demonization of Chinese people within their border, like for when conservatives do the yeah, oh, all Chinese people are bad, it helps China narratively because yeah, the, the all of Chinese... these rich Chinese people who moved here, they could just move back. Yeah, because the, they don't want to be discriminated against, right? The Chinese government mm -hmm. loves that shit. When, when like, American conservatives start, like, blaming everything and everyone about China for COVID. Um, oh, Israel yes. as well. The Israeli government is constantly... That's what I'm going to say. Yeah, 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 conflating yes. um, Jewish Zionism to anti-Jewishism. Yeah, it's the same thing. They are very similar on this regard. Because just like, just like Jewishness, uh, Jewish people, Chinese people are a diverse group of people that have traveled around the world. Like... Like, think about Singapore, Taiwan, Hong Kong, uh, Ch Chinese Malaysians, Chinese Americans, Chinese Germans, Chinese Brazilians. They are all Chinese, but with different aspects of culture. They have their own, you know, customs. They have, a lot of them even have their own language. But to Chinese government, to, for all of them to be, be perceived as, to, for them to, to be the only China, and all of these Chinese can be the same hegemonic block helps China, the CPC's rule, so much internationally. And this is the thing why I hate this uh, narrative from the conservative or just a, a lot of American, like for Pompeo, right? Like how many times he have sprout out racist rhetoric against Chinese people and uh, in America. And, and that's just, you know, I, this is a little bit of conspiratorial posting, but like Chinese... CPC have a strong tie with the American conservative uh, faction. Like, for example, um, Mitch McConnell's wife, mm -hmm. Yilan Chao, Zhao Xiaolan. She was her uh, grandfather, her, her father uh, is the CEO of a really big transportation company that also have a strong interest within China. Uh, he was one of the first per, like Taiwanese company that invested in China. And... Um, I'm not saying that she is like bought by China, by China. I don't think so. I think, but she has strong tie with the CPC, and oftentimes she directly will contact CPC officials. Like when she was in um, uh, Japan, I think in 2019, he 2019, yes, he had, she had, sorry, 2020, she, uh, she had a, um, uh, she had a uh, secret meeting with a very high profile, high. Uh, uh, high-end official, uh, Wang Qishan. Um, I think I remember it's a it's a little bit conspiracy posting here, but I, there's no concrete evidence for any of this. I can't. They won't. Chinese government won't have an official tone for this. American government won't, won't have official tone of this. FBI did a um, uh, investigation on Yilan Chao, but she was proven, you know, kind of clear. Also, the GOP uh, had a huge amount of. Uh, uh, um, uh, effort to well, I I, I uh, yeah, Chad, I mentioned Guo Wenwei yesterday. Um, but um, Mitch McConnell pushed really hard to make sure the feds don't get any name on his wife, otherwise he will be cooked, right? Um, but you know, it's kind of like the bourgeoisie, international bourgeoisie class have a united interest to f up politicians, and Clinton, like neoliberalism. American neoliberalism cannot function without a functional China. It is the world's factory, after all. Without the, the, a stabilized China, the current American economy will collapse. This is why if you look at how Biden, uh, the way he deal with China is this like, okay, I know you want to challenge my hegemonical power, but how about we step side, we step, up, we step back a bit. We tra strike a deal that both parties can benefit from capitalist like basically how about we strike a deal so we can fuck up the chinese and american working class and we can profit from it and no one talks about that like american leftists see chinese government as some sort of this um uh, uh, challenging force that can bring a somehow effective challenge to the american hegemony which is laughable Goldman Sachs, one of Goldman Sachs' uh, high executive is the grandson of the third president of China, Jiang Zemin. Like, like, if you look at this type of track record, how can you even say the CPC is um, 
even socialists or even can pose a threat to American hegemony. It will never do it, even if the kind of challenge it can propose, it's solely for the business. It's solely for the business. Oh, sorry. Just, I, I know I'm a little bit rambling here, but it's a yeah, lot I to cover. I and, can't believe that you're personally invested in this, you know, and that you're not just dispassionately talking about, you know, the, your, your home country uh, going to shit. <laughs> I, I I mean I, I I feel like more more so than anything the biggest frustration has to be that all of the people who feel like they should be your allies over here yes are working against you and re regurgitating they call me the race same, trader yeah yeah and calling you a race it, trader, the, yeah. The, yeah and it it's it's a sense of powerlessness that have almost caused me to have depression <laughs> when I was in college it was really bad I no oh god. Well, hopefully things do get and better. And speaking of, yeah, don't worry, I'm doing much better now. Uh, however, um, the last thing I want to talk about, uh, if we have more time, maybe I can do a little more, but, you know, this may be the last thing we talk about tonight, is uh, the East Asian, uh, the East, East Asian American experience. Um, and, oh, watch, this may sound a little off, but how many... Asian American famous um, Asian American film actor can you uh, talk about okay. can, you, can you name I would I would like to preface this by saying that I'd probably do pretty poorly if I was asked the same question about any racial group but I do not know the name of a single that is true yes. yeah I, I cannot remember the name um, of a single uh, actor um, it, it escapes me. It eludes me entirely. I'm and afraid. I don't blame you, Wash. You know, first of all, you don't watch that much movie. Second of all, you know, a lot of them don't get important role. And one thing I really want to mention about is, even though we have seen a little bit of more representation of East Asians in the American culture uh, products, however, a uh, few things, this is going to be a little bit rambly. Maybe I can collect my thoughts together, have more uh, con contextualized uh, analyzation of this. But, um, have you heard about Aquafina? I, I don't think you did. Uh, so Aquafina is this uh, Chinese-American female actress. Uh, I have a very complicated feeling towards her. On one hand, she is a marvelous actress. Some of her uh, movies truly show she can do really good performance. On the other hand, um, you know the idea of certain ethnic minority actors, either they do this on their own will because they want to make money, or they were forced to do borderline racist casting uh, because they only allowed to play these roles. Uh, she'd been playing, okay, not a seagull. She was playing a Northern Gannet in, uh, in the L Little Mermaid. And she is this other clown in this movie, despite her, her skill be able to carry her in a better role. And also, this may sound a little weird. Um, you know, Aquafina and also uh, the guy who plays Shang. She, they're like the, the new most famous actors and actresses to represent all East Asians. But if you look into their track records and also how these representations are done, there's so much improvements can be, can be, do, can be done. Mm -hmm. Asian American actors, uh, I quote James Hong, uh, you know, when he, the, the OG Chinese uh, uh, actor, I mean, he's one of the most famous role before like, like 2000 was from um, Little China, Big Trouble, which is a deeply racist film. Like it, films, a cultural product that involves Asian culture was seen, is seen as this sort of a, like a culture that can be easily taken by the Western cultural hegemony so easily. Like, think about, I know everyone loves Ninja Turtle or Ninjago, right? Like stuff like this. Yeah. But why is East Asian culture that is uniquely commercialized and commodified in the Western world? No one talks about them. If a similar type of trope that's similar to East Asian were played uh, to like, uh, like you know how Stibidi Gonzalez is like Walner Butter don't even talk about it. Looney Tunes don't show them anymore. Or like uh, stereotype stereotype of black people. Like just like we all commonly like no. Okay, this is problematic. We can't show it. B 
but East Asian representation, unless they are overtly racist, were never challenged ever by anyone. Right? Um, like, uh, uh, and and to most East Asian, this is this made most East Asian or just Asian actors in general. Like, for example, like uh, I forgot his name, but Rajesh from like Big Bang Theory, or like Tom from uh 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 uh, uh, uh Parks and Rec. Uh, mm -hmm. Or uh, that uh, short Asian uh, Korean restaurant owner from the Broke Girls. Asian people can only play one role. The quirk, nerd, unattractive dork. Because that's how Asian people are perceived in America. And in Asian American, we, it's hard for us to, to, to sort of step away from this type of stereotype. If all the cultural product depict us in this way, or when we talk about our original culture from China or from Japan can be utilized by anyone often with disregard with with disregard of of our of how Just we want moment. to perceive ourselves what please your internet um i'm sure it'll reconnect i mean i'm clearly still it should come back soon apparently the wi-fi cut out my apologies we can hear you correctly. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm I'm on wired. I guess the Wi-Fi is just being um Oh. Well, good luck to your Wi-Fi. <laughs> no, I was I was listening. I didn't miss anything you said. Please continue. No problem. It's just it is a t it, it it every time when I see how Asian people perce uh, portrayed in media before the 2020 uh it is always stereotype. Uh, uh, char uh you know, uh, caricature joke of a character they are never given like for example tom from parks and rec a, a supposed to be left like left-leaning liberal show are always portrayed as this counterpart of ron swanson the muscular uh, macho american white man and tom this like easy to cry small quirky not attractive beta male why do we have this why Asian people have to portray this type of character every time we see on the, on the, on the silver screen. Why? Right? Like, and the leftists are... I, I never hear anything from them towards the, to give any criticism towards this. Zero. Uh, and, 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 you know, just, just, this is just a thought. I don't know. Do you want to say anything? No, I mean, I, I agree. I think it's a real issue. I also think it's particularly this, ironic uh, gosh, that, it, you know, the, the, because like the American far right is postured towards identifying quote unquote, like enemies of the white race. And presumably the Chinese far right does this to a large extent as well. But it's funny because like everything you're talking about right now is exactly what those far right um, uh, uh, Chinese people would refer to as like PC bullshit. Like, all of the actual racism that they experience over here, it's not from black people in the one city you mentioned no. or whatever. It's like, it's, it's stuff like this, you know? It's the exact kind of progressivism yes. that they, 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 they hate to acknowledge. Absolutely. Um, and it's just really sad. I, I, I don't know. I mean, there is a change in the market. I mean, heck, Michelle Yu won the best actress from uh, Everything Ever All at Once, which I highly suggest everyone to watch. So is uh uh, Pyo, uh what is the name? Uh, the the, the actor who uh in Everything Ever All at Once. Uh, shoot, what is his name? Uh, Vietnamese American Chinese uh, the Chinese Vietnamese uh, American. Uh, 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 oh, oh yeah, K Hon. Uh, uh yeah, uh Kevin Kwan. Uh, I highly suggest everyone to watch that film. It's amazing. Um. If you don't like the film, you are a white supremacist. Sorry. Oh, um, <laughs> uh, shit. Yeah. Uh -oh. The clock yeah. is ticking for me. Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, anyhow, the last thing I will bring up is, uh, remember the noodle drama, the noodle book? Yes. Uh, uh, is yeah, the, the dumplings and noodles. Uh, yeah, well, Kefo did make sort of like, a, you know, a sense, like, you know, I guess, unsensitive joke. But it's fine. I love, I love, we love Kefos. Um. Uh, the thing I want to mention is that, like, when we're talking about when left-wing voices uh, bring up, like, Asian people, they choose the worst actor of them all, Rosalind. She is, sorry, sorry to oh. say this, but she's the worst. 
she's not Chinese. She's she's Filipino. Like I don't know why she tried. She, she want to like talk over Chinese people on this topic of cooking my culture's food. From what I can see, the white lady who wrote the book, she did a pretty good job of cooking my culture's food. And from what I can tell, she has a long dedication of studying my culture and my and the food and everything from I see. She's she's. Re you know, relatively respectable to a, you know, like, uh, acceptable, definitely acceptable. I think it's perceived acceptable. She, she did a pretty good job. But and, she's uh, white. But that's not, well, we should criticize. If we want to, if you, if, if Rosalind's criticism is that white supremacy as a system benefits white people disproportionately, we should criticize the system, capitalism, and the publishing industry that favors white people who wrote about, who write this book, not individual white actors who, you know, given their due diligence and respect to my culture, right? Like, like should I, then I should uh, criticize every single yoga mom because yoga is from mm -hmm. India? Or should I criticize Captain America's actor because, oh, you got to represent the big, macho, handsome man, America's ass and all, and then Chinese, you know, the fun fact, Sumu Liu is not a conventionally attractive man in Chinese standard. He's, uh, as well as uh, his father, like the person who cast, who played Wenwu, the Mandarin, is ambiguously extremely attractive. Everybody in China even consider his one of the most attractive man of his time. Uh, Sumu Liu, on the other hand, he might be more attractive in American standard of Asian people. You know, that sounds kind of icky, right? As, as well as Aquafina. And uh, one of maybe the real reason I mean it hurts because of this. Maybe I need to re examine my personal biases, huh? Right. Oh, sure. Well, yeah, now we, now we got to get into the misogyny thing. You know, we've, we've, we've pointed a lot of fingers in other directions, and now we're coming back to you. Could it be that you, in fact, were yes, actually yes. the woman hitting incel the entire time? <laughs> oh well, you know, uh, Asian, uh, Asian, um, Asian woman in America uh, face in this unique position, right? Uh, well, all power to Aquafina. I think she did did a many fabulous job in many of her production. She's a fabulous actress. All power to her. But Asian women, you know, are always perceived directly to because of their perceived Asianness are uniquely more feminine, which is. Like, this carries back to, like, 19th century Orientalism, right? The, the idea of Orient, this, this um, strip-away subjectivity, naturally forms a feminizing uh, aura towards the, towards the East. Uh, Orientalist painting in the 19th century usually depicts uh, this barbaric man, but extra-feminine woman as a strong element of how Asian people are depicted in media, which, was, which never went away. This is why uh, white supremacists love to talk about Asian women, because to them, Asianness can only be submissive, thus feminine. It is the traditional political uh, uh, perceived uh, uh, gender politic from the perspective of Western man. Which we this is the part why culturally mm -hmm. exported, yeah. Which which is like you know multiculturalism yes. wins again. <laughs> well, you know, I'm not saying that you shouldn't date Asian people if you want to. Uh, go ahead, do, but date whoever you want. But in the same time, you know, if you date Asian women because you have a strong fetish to towards them, that's just f racist. That's just really weird. And also, when I was talking about Aquafina, please don't take this as the wrong takeaway. My point is, uh, it stems from her career choice. Maybe don't play a bubbling Norton Gannett next time, but a person that can better represent our culture and make a more positive model. I know this, I'm asking too much, but it's, it's yeah. Well, I think, you know, people here will agree with you. We need more Storm Dragon instead of uh, Norton Gannett. You know what I mean? Yes. Um, I, um, oh, oh, we're half an hour over. I feel like I could listen yes, to you talk are. for a really long time and sort of lose track of things. Thank you. Just, I'm sure you've heard this before. You've a very excellent voice. Um, Jesus Christ. Seriously, maybe one time I should just do traditional Chinese storytelling of uh, Journey to the West in the background and while you are, whatever, doing uh, playing a video game or something. True, it uh, seems like it'll work. Um, 
No, yes. yeah, well, I, I am I am sure that you will uh, be on again, so I don't think we'll have any trouble with that, at least. Thank uh, you very oh, much. A uh, few requests. Oh, no, please. Uh, I, know, and I also, hope I'm not asking too much. Also, a lot of people oh. were asking um, uh, uh, if you have any socials that you'd like to share, anything to that effect. So, about social, I am a little bit concerned about leaking my personal information through a Twitter account. However... Uh, I am putting this into serious, serious consideration. If I actually create a new social media account just for this identity, as well as if I create a YouTube channel, I will... Uh, Wash, would you mind to uh, have a shout out for us, maybe oh. in the video? Sure. Absolutely. When you put up the segment, uh, I can. I will email you my uh, Twitter handle as well as the YouTube channel uh, underneath the segment that you will put up. Uh, please for uh, Tempest to to put it in the description. I think that will be very helpful. Yeah, yeah. Just me uh, just uh, message um, well, or email me, and I'll see it. Yes, and as well as a shout out for a friend uh, for President Sunday. Yes, I, I hey! talked to Sunday for a long time now. Uh, Yes, uh, and Sunday have a small request from for so I can tell you. Uh, he think you should give him perms so he can raid in next time, and uh, also tell the Vashites the squiz send their love. I have no idea what perms to raid in means, but I'll clarify with President Sunday. I have a lingering feeling that I might have had this exact conversation with him before, and that I just have a very bad memory. But yes, I'll re-clarify. Thank you so much for coming on twice, dude. I really appreciate you taking the time. He's a. You're welcome. Oh, uh, one last thing, Wash. I don't know, would it be allowed? So, you know, the video, um, you know, they may literally not allowed to do this. But when you put this uh, video on, with this big uh, edited video, can you put the Iron Dragon on the, uh, the thumbnail? Like, the, like a cutout of the Iron Dragon. Tempest. Uh, the human form, not in the dragon form. Of course, Tempest. All right, we're, we're signaling the call. If they, um, okay. if Tempest and Ryan do their jobs properly, they, they heard that, okay? You shot up the bat signal. I know, so uh, I know I'm, I'm pushing the, the line a little too much. Uh, uh, two more things. <laughs> go right ahead. Just before I go. Uh, <laughs> is this video going to be on wa the Wash Pit or the Wash uh, channel? May I? Uh, be informed of. For a casual three-hour combined conversation, this is absolutely <laughs> going on the Vosh pit. I'm sorry, and I love you. All right. Don't that's, worry. That's I the algorithm. You, you're going to have to take that up with Google. And, uh, okay, one last thing. Uh, I am really pushing the bar, pushing the envelope. Oh, chat's mad at me now. Uh, I know many ch chat chatter is um, asking me this. So, you know, I'm going to represent the will of the people, like oh, no. the Chinese government this time. Would I get a blue name? <laughs> oh, yeah, wait. yeah, you've been on twice. Yeah, for sure. Easy clap. I'm gonna have a blue name. Ah, oh, this is <laughs> truly the almost honorable thing I have done. Oh, speaking of, Vosh. Okay. okay. Yeah. I know you probably will never do this, but in the future, if anyone uh, bring up the, all the faceless accusation of you, can you repeat after me, okay? Do not listen to the slander of me. I am my father's most honorable. <laughs> can I just play that on like a um? Can I play that on a voice board and just re like repeat that whenever I get slandered? Yes, you should do that. I don't think I can. I don't think I can match your voice. I honestly, I think well, that like, I if sure. I tried to do that after you doing that would be like um when Simba roared after Mufasa did. You know, I I, I don't want to <laughs> invite the comparison. Uh, and when the, the tanky or the, the other people harassing you uh, was laughing like the hyenas, a dino man showed up behind their back and just repeating this in his real voice, scaring them away. Like Roaring loudly. Up. Well, <laughs> but yeah, I am sure your father is very proud of you. I hear that sometimes. Thank you so much for coming on. I know you will again. I really appreciate you taking the time. I know chat does as well. Yes. I got to read donos, then disappoint Thank them by so ending much. early. Yes. Oh, don't worry about it. It has been a blast, Wash. It is, yeah, thank you. If you, in the future, you have any question regarding to China or anything uh, about, y y it means a lot of things. I don't know, Elder Score lore, uh, you can, or D&D &D lore, you can also ask me. Uh, I probably also send you those uh, rec restaurant rec recommendations, as I promised before. Okay. Please do. Um, I will and you can tell me about it next um, time, too. Take care. I'll talk yes. to you soon. Of course. Have a wonderful night. Bye-bye. Right.